Good afternoon, ore digger fans. Please turn your attention to the new core digger vision. Montana Tech Digger Vision and production is presented by Nucor. We missed this. We missed the field, the track, and the court. We missed the pressure, the competition, and the sportsmanship. And we missed you, the fans. We love your cheers, your chants, your excitement, and your support. You're part of this team. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Montana Tech's Bob Green Field at Alumni Coliseum for today's Frontier Conference matchup and the annual Hall of Fame game. The Montana Tech pregame is brought to you by Northwestern Energy. Today's game features the College of Idaho Yotes and your Montana Tech Ore Diggers. Please welcome the Montana Tech Pep Band under the direction of Dan Olson.
Vision's checkout. Digger Vision for today's starters. Today's starting lineup is brought to you by Montana Orthopedics. And now for your Montana Tech or Diggers. At quarterback number eight, Jet Campbell. Your running backs first, number 24, Blake Counts. Also at running back, number 25, Tyler Fultz. Your wide receivers, number two, Mark Estes. Also at wide receiver, number six, Trevor Hoffman. At wide receiver, number 10, Kylie Cabrera. And at wide receiver, number 18, Parker Johnston. Your tight end for the Ore Diggers, number 87, Jalen Taggart. Here's your offensive line, number 74, Carson Schumann. Also on the line, number 75, Hunter Sparks. On the offensive line, number 77, Max Anderson. Also on the line, number 69, Jack Hiller. And finally on the offensive line, number 61, Tristan Stopper. Your defense, starting with the defensive backs, number five, Jordan Washington. At defensive back, number nine, Naoki Armour. Another defensive back, number seven, Brandon Morley. And finally, defensive back, number 17, Teddy Croft. Your linebackers, number 37, Spencer Schrock. Also at linebacker number 40, Bridger Johnson. And finally at linebacker number 50, Cole Wyant. And now for your defensive line, number 42, Zach Trumbull. Also on the defensive line, number 57, Logan Kaladechuk. And at another linebacker, number 94, Isai Longoria. And finally, on the defensive line, number 98, T.J. McCreely. The officials for today's game, Greg Tuttle, Jay Gomeza, Kevin Leishman, Scott Orr, Marcus Slocum, Scott Pondu, and David Bittrick. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, please welcome the Montana Tech Pam Band under the direction of Dan Olson.
Montana Tech welcomes all players, officials, and spectators to today's contest. As a member of the NAIA and the Frontier Athletic Conference, we are committed to the true spirit of competition by being a champion of character through five core character values the NAIA embraces, which are respect, integrity, responsibility, servant leadership, and sportsmanship. We ask each of you as a participant, official, or spectator to abide by these values by creating a positive environment in which our athletes may participate, our officials may work, and you, the spectator, may enjoy. Please enjoy today's contest. Montana Tech would like to remind fans to always show good sportsmanship, racial and sexist slurs, profanity, and any other action that endangers the safety of players, coaches, officials, administrators, or fans will not be tolerated. The Frontier Conference would like to thank the following corporate sponsors for their continued support of our conference. Cooper Tire, Tirerama, the official tire company of the Frontier Conference. D.A. Davidson, the official financial services firm of the Frontier Conference. Irk Hotels, the official hotel group of the Frontier Conference. McDonald's, the official restaurant chain of the Frontier Conference. Northwestern Energy, the official energy company of the Frontier Conference. Pepsi, the official soft drink company of the Frontier Conference. And U.S. Bank, the official bank of the Frontier Conference. Visit the Frontier Conference website at www.frontierconference.com to get all of the updated scores and information, along with uh, viewing a listing of many friends and Frontier sponsors, along with consulting fan travel in making your hotel reservations when your team is on the road playing in other cities of the Frontier Conference. Hey, Ordigger fans, if you are in need of assistance at today's game, look no further than the Montana Tech Courtesy Crew wearing green vests, sponsored by Ace Hardware. The Ordigger Courtesy Crew can help you find what you're looking for, just like Ace Hardware, the helpful place.
and gentlemen, Pioneer Technical brings you the greatest ore digger of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, Ordigger fans, this is our place. This is Bob Greenfield at Alumni Coliseum, and this is Hallowed Ground. Welcome, your Montana Tech Ordiggers. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Montana Tech's Bob Greenfield and Alumni Coliseum for today's Frontier Conference football action. The Montana Tech pregame is brought to you by Northwestern Energy. We also want to thank today's game day partners, Montana Orthopedics and Northwestern Energy. We also want to thank Zip Beverage and Montana Tech Touchdown Club 
for being the official sponsor of the Montana Tech tailgate. Today's game features the College of Idaho Yotes and your Montana Tech Ore Diggers! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Montana Pep Band will be performing the National Anthem. Please rise and remove your caps for the playing of today's National Anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us for today's game as the honorary captain is 2021 Hall of Fame inductee Don Hawkinson. Don was inducted into the Montana Tech Hall of Fame last night as a longtime booster, supporter, and contributor to Ordigger Athletics. Flipping the coin for today's game is another 2021 Hall of Fame inductee, Wade Bristol. Wade played football for the Ordiggers from 1976 to 1979 and played many, many games on this field as a Butte High Bulldog and a Montana Tech ore digger. Today's coin flip is brought to you by Dickie's Barbecue. We miss this. We miss the field, the track, and the court. We miss the pressure, the competition, and the sportsmanship. And we miss you, the fans. We love your cheers, your chants, your excitement, and your support. You're part of this team. Welcome back. 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 All right, or 
Diggers. It's time to go to work. Today's kickoff is brought to you by Dickie's Barbecue. Kick off your next corporate meeting with Dickie's Legit Texas Barbecue. Kicking off for the ore diggers, number 83, Jared Griffith. Will be led out, it looks like Ryan Hibbs will take the snap at quarterback. Hibbs so out of the shotgun. A kind of a nickel look out of Tech's secondary here to start this game. Calzaretta, I do believe, on his left hip. Man in motion, left to right. Hibbs will play action. They're going to run screen out on the edge, and the pass is caught. Looked like he drug a knee about a yard, maybe two downfield, as he goes out into the hands of Juarez. Hunter Juarez, the senior out of uh, University of Nevada, yeah. gets his first catch. Bubble screen to start the game, and... He's throwing dead into that wind, you know, kind of at an angle across the field. That's the way the wind's blowing. Uh, dead against it, that ball looked like it floated. Uh, Har or Juarez uh, struggled to bring it in and stay on his feet. Hibbs will hand it off to Calzaretta. Calzaretta across the 30 to the 32. Nice run. Boy, he packed up and wrapped both arms around that football, and he'll pound it across to the 32. Going to bring up third down and three here for the College of Idaho, and this is a team that feasts on short third down yardage. Nickelback that time, Angel Sanchez in on the tackle, but uh, yeah, Montana Tech starting the game in nickel here, and uh, you give up a little kind of weight uh, in the in the back seven, but you know, the quickness and, and ability to get sideline to sideline is key. Third down and three, man in motion left to right, out of the shotgun, Hibbs, one back at home. Hibbs, three-step drop, checking off passing lanes across the middle. That one's going to be incomplete, and that will bring up fourth down as Montana Tech good coverage downfield. Hibbs looked like he ran through about three different receivers and then tried to dump it off through the middle. That one falls incomplete, and Montana Tech's offense will get a go. Good job by Blake Allred, uh, the inside linebacker that time. His man assignment was Calzaretta, and uh, uh, as Hibbs was escaping the pocket, he tried to dump down to his back, but Allred was all over it. So the uh, Diggs will bring the punt return unit in. They blocked a punt a week ago. Beautiful punt here. Tight spiral. Nose down. Fielded at the 24. Digs the other way. Estes cuts back into the center of the field. 45 out to the 48-yard line. Estes, a tremendous weapon any time he touches the football, and he'll bring that one out just shy of the 50. Great field position for the Digs. Right to left on your radio. Montana Tech's offense will come out and get a go. Mark Estes really knows his business back there. I mean, you know, there's a lot of guys that look comfortable returning, but, I mean, it just looks like it's his business. He yeah. gets a nice low turned over spiral that time, a chance to catch and get a little room, get a little momentum as he's returning it. He just understands how to return the football. So in comes the offense. Three receivers, two backs as they have a full back to the right side, deep back. We'll step up as that is Blake Counts rolling out. Jet Campbell downfield, pass complete across the 40, 35 to the 34. True sprint out that time, not roll out, just sprint out over the right tackle. And he picked up Hoffman. Uh, they're giving Hoffman the, the, the respect out there on the wide side that he deserves. And Hoffman just ran about a 10-yard stop route. Got lots of cushion. Ball was delivered on time, and Hoffman knew what to do with it once he received it. Hoffman played last week. I wouldn't say played a ton. He did get snaps, and it looks like he is certainly uh, feeling a little bit better out here today than uh, a week ago. First down and 10, man in motion on the far right side. Two backs again, handoff. Blake counts, counts. Not a whole lot there. He'll get a yard. And this College of Idaho defense doesn't give up much in the run game. They do an outstanding job in that front seven. Uh, and they have really shut down teams who are trying to run the football. Year in and year out, they're always really solid in the defensive front. Just a four-man surface. You get a little uh, uh, one technique, you know, a shade on the on the on the weak side guard, and a, a strong shade on the on the strong side 
guard, you know, just a typical four-man front here. One back at home, three receiver spread here. Jet Campbell, one step in trouble. Jet steps up in the pocket. He's going to run. Jet, nice little head fake across the 30, stiff arm across the 25, first down yardage, out of bounds. Jet Campbell, <laughs> he had the football out in the hand like Walter Payton. You, I want to bring that into your body, son, but he does a, a great run and does move the chains for Montana Tech. Glowing with confidence. Made a couple of nice moves and a nice escape up there. You know, it didn't look like his escape was in the middle. It looked like his escape was going to be around the right side, but he made a couple of good moves, and you could really see the confidence, a little swagger as he crossed the first down markers. That's, that's good to see because, uh, you know, Jet does move pretty well. I wouldn't say he's a running quarterback. But he's athletic enough to do that kind of thing, and I really like to see that early. You know, to, not just to see him do it, but to gain confidence doing it. You know, it's just going to help him as the game progresses here. Trey Copeland, offensive lineman for Montana Tech, started to try and get off the field, and it looks like he's having a, a foot issue. As uh, left foot, just unable to get any weight on it, so he will sit down. They'll bring a sub in for him here. 12-17 left to play in the opening quarter. Both teams will come over and chat with their coaching staff here. Frontier Conference action Saturday afternoon. Montana Tech with their first possession. College of Idaho went three and out in their opener. The Digs looking at first down and 10 from the C of I 21-yard line. I like what I see out of Campbell so far. Just the sprint out pass, completion to Hoffman. This will be uh, immediate time. You know, out. just a, a fairly simple a play that, that between the two of them turned into a big play. And... You know, Campbell taking the drop back, didn't like what he saw, and being able to escape for another first down, just, you know, that that's the kind of thing that just builds confidence in your quarterback, you know, versus maybe getting taken down, you know, hit from behind, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, Jack Campbell starting this game out in pretty good fashion. I love that. I, so they, we get a couple of uh, uh, Copeland being helped off by the trainers and then another pair of offensive linemen run out and, and bring him in. But Copeland not putting a whole lot of weight on his left foot. Uh, Copeland, uh, the junior out of Huntley Project, he just was, a wee little guy. Yeah, but he was beat up a little bit to yeah. start the season yeah. too. Yeah, he's he, had a tough time. And honestly, I, I, and, I, and it, this is certainly not an issue reserved for one team, but, you know, Tech's offensive front, uh, really has been beat up here to start this season. Uh, and that is certainly a group that uh, on every football team does get the tar beat out of them each and every year. Yeah, we'll check his his health as the game progresses here. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it just never looks good, you know, if you're getting helped off, especially, I mean, there's a lot. It's hard to play the game of football with yeah. any kind of uh, soreness in your lower legs or feet. But uh, at offensive front, you need every bit of strength and, and, and mobility out of that lower extremities as you can have. First down and 10, Montana Tech. Split backs, three receivers, and they're going to run counter. Nice handoff. Blake Counts trying to break a tackle. He does down to the 15. We saw him well, run that in the first game, and I, I don't know that I've seen much of it since, but that's no. the true good old sprint draw. You run that draw play. If you're, if you're rolling out to throw the football quite a bit, and they do quite a bit of that with Campbell, if you're rolling out, uh, there's great opportunity in the sprint draw game, and Montana Tech's trying to take care of of a little over pursuit out of that defense. Good play on first down. Pickup of six brings up second and four from the 15 yard line. Out of the shotgun, Campbell, two receivers left, one to the right. Man right comes in motion. They'll hand it to him on the jet sweep. It's Estes. Estes turns it upfield, spins across the 15 down to the 13. Nice spin move gives him an additional two yards. That'll bring up third down and two from the 13. Yeah, they just, they, you can just see they're looking for as many different ways as they can to keep Estes involved in the game because he's so good with the ball in his hands. Scoreless first quarter thus far. Frontier Conference action here on a Saturday. The Diggs will change out personnel. Looks like we'll get tight end back in as Logan Kennedy will check into the ball game. He had a tremendous game up to Haver and really has had a nice year for the Diggs. They bunched him up to the right tight end, the wing back to the wide side, and a couple tight receivers here to the boundary side. Third down and two, one back at home is Counts. Campbell out of the shotgun. Counts gets it. He bounces left. He's across the 10 to the 8. First down yardage, first and goal, Montana Tech. College of Idaho is doing a, a good job on the inside zone at the point of attack. But, they, you know, the, the pursuit and a little bit of over-pursuit, Counts is seeing that as he's getting the ball. The mesh point in the backfield, he's seeing that, and he's seeing the cutback opportunity there. And, that you know, that cutback opportunity comes, to, you know, twofold. Uh, the back's always got to look for it. But you also have to have a, a quarterback who's carrying out his fakes and controlling the backside end just with ball fakes. So up to the line of scrimmage, Campbell out of the shotgun. 
Caprera goes in motion right to left. Hand off to Counts. Counts, nothing there. Counts gets swarmed to defensive front for C of I all over him. Wanted the same thing he did on the previous play. He wanted the cutback, but uh, uh, the Yotes defense was onto it, and they crashed hard with their backside end and got the tackle. Second and goal from the eight, nearly the nine-yard line here for the Digs. They used to be fun when you were sequencing plays. Very rarely. I mean, you know, in, in 11 or 12 years of coaching, did we just go bang with one play and, and run it again the next play? Yeah. But it's kind of funny when people do it. So it's like, oh, that worked. Let's do it again. <laughs> Second down and goal. <laughs> Campbell, pump fake once. He's going to the end zone. Has a man back in the end zone. Caught. Touchdown, Montana. No, they say it fell out. Ooh. Hoffman falling out of bounds. Had the football. He went into the retaining wall. I'd like to see Let's the replay, replay here. I think it, yeah. he's got a foot down. Boy, it looked like he had that football in the back of the end zone. And the instant replay certainly looks as though he did. But Montana Tech third and goal from the nine. That was a great play and a great job by Hoffman. You know, he he worked to get his feet in, but he had to stretch out for the football. But, you know, you have to look at, you know, where he has in, is in stride as that ball hits his hands because he doesn't bobble it. There was no bobbling going on, no juggling. One back, four receivers, dropping back. Campbell, crossing route, pass complete. Estes, touchdown, Montana Tech. Great, great route. route. Yeah, great route. Just stomped hard on the quick little five-yard out, reversed his field out over the mat, uh, over the middle. You see backs do that. You know, they, that, uh, for a running back out of the backfield, that's a check angle. You know, a, a good stomp on the out route and then bend it back in. Perfectly executed angle route by uh, Mark Estes and, and uh, tip of the hat to Jet Campbell for finding him. Griffith is in for the PAT. Outstanding throw and a nice drive by Montana Tech. So they get in. So the Digs will get the touchdown and they get on the board first. Nine plays, 51 yards, seven points. The Digs leading 7-0. to zero. Frontier Conference action. KBOW Buttes. We're back after this one minute timeout. Media timeout with score, second and first quarter. Here, and it's tremendous. It's it's uh, it's it's great to walk through the tailgate. But again, you know, I'm seeing people at these games I never used to see, and uh, you know, the, you combine it with a lot of things. You know, a lot of kind of local flavor, whether it's in the coaching staff or uh, the, the, the local players. But yeah, hats off to Butte for supporting this place. Griffith low line drive bounces at the two out the back of the end zone. So 9.33 left to play here in this opening quarter. Great kick again by Griffith. Montana Tech special teams have done a really nice job this year. And I still haven't been to the College of Idaho in Caldwell okay. for a game, but I, their game it's day nice. atmosphere and everything is supposed to be a lot of fun too. My brother Mark 
who uh, resides down there. I think he's got us tuned in right now, but uh, his in-laws are the College of Idaho or Albertson okay. yep. alumni, and you know he's been to quite a few games down there and he said the game day atmosphere is it's great. fantastic and they, they've always treated me real well and we've had a lot of fun down there and certainly some good games first down and 10 slot in motion right to left here for the college of idaho as a drop and back three-step drop pocket holds passing route downfield across the 40 to the 41 it gets out to harden and harden with the reception that's going to be a nice pitch and catch a gain of 16 and college of idaho will get their first first down of the day just a four-man rush that time a good job by College Idaho giving their quarterback time to step up there, get a look around, and he caught that uh, deep dig route down the middle, to my favorite completion in the game of football. Hibbs, a sophomore out of Boise, puts slot in motion again. They've had somebody in motion every snap thus far. Hand off to the tailback, Calzaretta, out to the 45. Calzaretta, I believe, a 12-year senior for the <laughs> – joking. <laughs> he, he's one of those – we always laugh about it because those players that feel like they've been around forever because they have, they have beaten everybody – and everybody in the conference really wants them to graduate. He's had an outstanding career uh, as a Yoke. And it's no secret, we become fans of so many players from different teams in yeah. the Frontier Conference. It's a lot of fun. Second and six, play action, Hibbs rolling right. He has a lot of space, airs it up downfield, pass complete to the Tech 45 to the 42-yard line, complete that time as he goes to Juarez. Juarez gets his second reception of the day. And a nice pitch and catch. Juarez with a really nice hook route to come back and help his quarterback out. Brings up first and 10. College of Idaho throwing the football well here early. And Hibbs, I mean, he found Juarez, but Hibbs uh, on the rollout pass, they got the end hook that time, so Hibbs had his choice. He could have ran for a first yeah. down too, but, you know, he took the easy route and found Juarez for the easy completion. Two receivers left, one in motion to the right side. Out of the shotgun, Hibbs. One step drop, quick slant is tipped and incomplete. He was looking for Hunter Juarez that time. Washington was coming on the charge. That's one of those, I think if Washington's eyes were up at the football instead of the player, he might have been able to pull that in, but he was looking to make contact. Yeah, that's one of those situations. That ball's on its way, and Juarez is trying to get into that first move. You know, it wasn't it wasn't like footsteps or alligator arms. He's he's good enough with the football that he's looking to get into that first move as the ball arrives and, and uh, just lost concentration. Tech brings four to the defensive front. Hand off to Calzaretta. He has a gap. He's down near the 30. 35-yard line, fights his way just across the 35. That'll bring up third down and four here for the College of Idaho. Yeah, Cole Wyant making first contact with Calzaretta, but, you know, he had both arms around the ball, absorbed the blow, and was able to pick up a few more yards. But he's always ran tough, uh, uh, Calzaretta. And what's lost a little bit in him is when he finds space, he can really pick him up and put him down. He is quick. Third down and four. Two receivers left, one to the right, tight end right. And Hibbs out of the shotgun. Montana Tech stems right. And Hibbs dropping back, checks through his receivers, has time, and he'll get complete across the 30. Boy, his offensive front gave him a lot of time. He was able to check through what felt like three different receivers to get the completion. You know, one of the biggest differences that, that's been get, uh, being able to get used to is Montana Tech doesn't bring a ton of pressure. You know, in, in the Chuck Morrell, B.J. Armstrong era, I, it was fun to watch them dial up the different pressure packages. I mean, guys sniffing at the line of scrimmage, coming from all different angles. They just don't bring a lot of pressure. Yeah, first down at 10 here for the College of Idaho. Two receivers right on the wide side of the field, one back at home. Hibbs dropping back, wants to throw. Route is going to fall incomplete. Interesting route that time is uh, looked like Veal was kind of on the comeback, but he was almost trailing towards behind the line of scrimmage. I mean, when he passed that football, it wasn't more than a yard downfield, if not less. He was on a drag route. They always tell those receivers, work back to the football. But, you know, he was working back behind the line of scrimmage and literally a point-blank throw from Hibbs that got through his hands. Second down and 10. I look down and see Copeland putting his helmet back on. He might come back in for the digs. Second and 10. Hibbs hands it off to his tailback. Finds a little bit of a gap across the 25-yard line with the carry is going to be Hunter Gilbert. So Gilbert, the redshirt freshman, will get his first carry of the day. Yeah, you never know how it looks. You, you can see it from here. Almost looked like the play was uh, for, for Gilbert to bounce it out here. Uh, uh, looked like there was room around the right edge, but he cut back and found a little space amongst all the giants in between the tackles. 26th carry of the year for Gilbert, 100 and about 143 yards on the year. One back, three receivers out of the shotgun. 
Three-step drop, right pass, complete across the 20 and shoved out of bounds at the 21. That's going to be short of the first down marker as the pass goes to Harden. Harden is shoved out of bounds by Washington. Good job by Washington. Stayed on top of it, worked downhill, got the receiver pushed out of bounds. Looking at a fourth and about two yards here. Uh, not really no man's land, but looks like the College of Idaho is going to take a timeout here, official timeout or College of Idaho to talk about it. It's interesting to see Hibbs, you know, Hibbs coming into this football game, as we mentioned. Oh, no. They're going to, the offense going to stay out. They're going to get to the line of scrimmage quickly. Hibbs has one back at home. Fourth down and two here for the College of Idaho. Twin tight right, one back at home. Tech puts five, almost six on the defensive front. Handoff, Calzaretta bounces right. Calzaretta across the 20, and that will be first down yardage for the College of Idaho. He needed two and gets five. Yeah, good job up front, the right side of that line, led by uh, – a fullback in the backfield that time. Uh, Mitchell Moore, or excuse me, he's a tight end, 6'3", 245 pounds, leading the way. Injured player down for the College of Idaho. 5.27 left to play here in this opening quarter. Montana Tech leading 7-0. College of Idaho went three and out on their opening possession. This drive, though, uh, they have been able to move the chains well and doing it a lot through the air. Uh, that was the 10th play of this drive for the College of Idaho. So far, it almost looks like an inner squad, doesn't it? Not a lot of pressure out of either yeah. defense. Uh, both teams, uh, you know, using their play action game and their running game, a little sprint out pass, uh, kind of save completions, but it almost looks like a mimic of each other's uh, offenses and defenses. I wish I knew more, like the idea of being able to watch their games up to this point to, to find out what the quarterback situation is. Because I, I certainly expected Hibbs to get snaps in this football game, but I, I certainly wasn't expecting him to start. And with that said, is something wrong with Jack Rice possibly uh, coming into this football game? I don't know for sure, honestly. Uh, offensive lineman, uh, number 55, Tyler Barron, being helped off the field there. 6'2", 240-pound redshirt freshman right out of Meridian. College of Idaho. Looking at first and 10 inside the red zone at the Montana Tech 17-yard line. Tight end releases, comes into the backfield. Two receivers. And a play action, wanting to throw. Hibbs has all day. He's going to go into the back of the end zone, flag down. And it looks like we're going to get a pass interference in the end zone here. A lot of contact both ways. I'm wondering if they're going to flag it for holding. They tried to run a, uh, a post corner route out of the a Juarez, you know, bending it inside and then turning. There was contact both ways. I didn't see anything that really affected the, the ball being able to be completed or not, though. See what we get from our white hat. 5.22 left to play here in this opening quarter. Montana Tech leading 7-0. And it looks like it will go against the digs. And we'll get our official call here from our white hat. Holding. Number five on the defense. Half the distance to go. So Washington hit with the defensive holding. So half the distance down to the eight-yard line. First and goal for the College of Idaho. Yeah, so those are tough. I mean, you're you're one-on-one. -on -one. Washington's one-on-one. -on -one there with Juarez. Uh, you know, he shrunk on it. There was a little contact as Juarez wanted to bend back out on the corner route. Yeah, there might have been a little tug of the jersey, but I didn't see anything that, that really slowed the receiver down. Hibbs out of the shotgun. It was just minor cheating, not, <laughs> not major, major stuff. Cheating. Gotcha. One back to receive. It's good to know. Hibbs out of the shotgun. Slot goes in motion. Handoff to Calzaretta. Calzaretta puts the head down across the five. That'll be a gain of three. And Boy, that's the thing is he's getting two, three yards downfield before there is contact made uh, as his offensive front really doing a nice job. Yeah, doing a good job up front, that offensive front from the College of Idaho. And Keyshawn James Newby in there uh, yep. in the defensive front. Now we get a kind of a line change, call it a check back in the game. James. And uh, T.J. Makahili, go ahead. James Newby had a monster game last week, played really well. One back. Fullback and tight end will both release and go to the right side of the formation. One receiver wide left. Out of the shotgun, handoff Calzaretta. Calzaretta has a blocker. He pushes his blocker into the end zone and a score for the College of Idaho. Calzaretta will get the touchdown. That is his eighth rushing touchdown of the year. And the College of Idaho gets on the board. He got on the back that time of Dawson Packwood, 6'3", 280-pound freshman out of Clarkston, Washington. He got on his back and just got led into the end zone. So play in for the score. College of Idaho down by one with 4.37 left to play here in the opening quarter. Snap and hold are good. The kick is up, 
and the kick is through. 7-7 our score. Montana Tech and the Yotes of College of Idaho tied up here. First quarter action from Bob Greenfield. We'll take a break. We are back here to Bob Greenfield after this one-minute timeout. Dude, Hudson, your new man cave is sweet. Come watch the game. Dude, they're gonna score. Man cave, lady lounges, whatever you call them, steals furniture has exactly what you need to make the room come to life. Shop our man cave showroom today for ideas to upgrade your bar set, fireplace, TV, recliner, furniture set, and refrigerator. Steals furniture, making man caves happen for 87 years. Every time I meet an ore digger, there's a natural bond and natural connection. Hey, we're back here once again to Bob Greenfield as the wind knocks the ball off the tee again and now the College of Idaho will have to bring a holder in here. The wind really kind of kicking up out of the west. We expect winds into the 20 mile an hour range throughout the day today. The good news is in that respect they shouldn't shift a whole lot so they will blow from west to east which uh, is across the field if you will rather than with the field in either direction. We'll see if they give uh, Mark Estes a chance to to return. Of course they're both dangerous both him and Torgerson but Kickoff bounces at the 12, single hop to Montana Tech. Estes will return. Estes across the 20, gets away from one uh, defender out to the 25. So Estes with the return that time. The Digs will take over at the 25-yard line. They scored on their last possession. 7-7 our score. 429 left to play here in this opening quarter. A, a big weekend of football in the Frontier Conference. Again, we have a log jam at 3-2. and two. Eastern College of Idaho, Western, and Southern are all 3-2. and two. You have Montana Tech and Carroll College both 2-3. and three. But you look at that, if, if Tech is to win today, if Carroll wins today, then all of a sudden there's another log jam and you have uh, two different teams in the fray at that point. So, so much still to change here in this Frontier Conference season. If you can get any wind advantage, Montana Tech's got it right now. One back at home, play action. Jet Campbell wants to throw, has a man wide open. Hoffman, Hoffman at the 50, 45, and out of bounds of the 40. Boy, that's one if uh, his quarterback sees him initially, that's six points. Hoffman beat his corner in a bad way and got the football, and he gets down to the College of Idaho 40. You got to credit Campbell, though. That ball yes. was in the back's belly for a long time there. That was a great play-action fake. They got the secondary. They got the linebackers sucked up, but they got the secondary as well. And Hoffman gave a College of Idaho a little bit what Juarez gave Montana Tech on the previous possession, a little bit of a bend in corner route and uh, Campbell I like what Campbell did there he just he threw a catchable ball first down and 10 Montana Tech at the College of Idaho 43 dropping back Campbell steps up Jet it releases down to Hoffman Hoffman at the 25 great little footwork action and they'll mark him out near the 20 yard line Hoffman getting a little reassurance from his teammates yeah. on the sideline a lot of action there uh, you know a, a little bit of a jam off the line of scrimmage but Hoffman was real active Campbell actually looked to the right side, didn't like what he saw, and, and as he went to escape on the left side, looked up and said, boy, it's nice to have a 6'5 receiver, isn't I, it? It's just so easy to find. And he looks like himself again. You know, he, he is out. His uh, energy level is awfully high right now. Montana Tech first and 10 from the 20-yard line of the College of Idaho. Full house, backfield, full back and a tailback. They'll run the pitch to Blake Counts. Counts across the 15, turns the corner. Nice block out in front of him. He'll get down to the 12. That's going to be a gain of eight on first down. Yeah, good job of getting the edge for that uh, Montana Tech offense. Hunter Sparts, the 300-pound left tackle. At, I mean, he's just setting all kinds of lifting records at Montana Tech. Yeah. You know, he's a he's a weight room fanatic. But, uh, yeah, his the whole sideline was behind him there. Knew he made a good play for his back to get uh, that ball cut up and, and good yards on first down. 7-7 seven, seven our score. Montana Tech with the football second down and three. Ball at the 13-yard line, out of the shotgun, counts on the backfield, counts will get it, counts, tries to fight his way through that first level, they'll push the pile down to about the 11. That'll be a gain of one, possibly two hard-fought yards. You gotta figure, you know, as long as you're moving forward here, this is probably going to be four down territory, looking at third and, you know, about two yards here for this Tech offense. You gotta challenge that offensive front. How often do we say that? 
challenge them, give them a little poke in the ribs and say, let's go get this first down. Third down and two. Montana Tech is perfect on third down so far today. Two and two. We'll see what they bring up here. Jet Campbell puts two receivers right side. I see Torgerson and Estes on that side. Twin tight left. They have not gone to the tight end yet. And they certainly are a big factor in this offense. Play action. Campbell wants to throw. Drops it off to his tight end. Logan Kennedy across the 10. Five down to the four. Flag down. So they do get it out to the tight end. First down yardage, but we'll see what our flag will give us here. Receiver up here was trying to get an angle, and he was expecting Kennedy to try and cut it up. I think you might get a block in the back here uh, from the receiver. I mean, he did whatever he could to get his head in front. There was no nope. flag on the play. They picked it up. The there you go, because it was it was really close what was going player. on there. But, they, you know, they actually, as this contact was happening, the receiver put his arms up in the air, I think, and, and you know, kind of like, yep. I'm me, not really blocking me. him. <laughs> so first and goal from the six. Montana Tech in the red zone here. 121 left to play in this opening quarter. Montana Tech with the football. They have uh, five plays on this drive. They've gone 69 yards thus far. And we'll see if they can go another six for points. Three receivers wide left. Hoffman on the outside. Counts in the backfield with Campbell out of the shotgun. Counts, gets it. Counts. Fights his way down to the one. Boy, Blake counts. Strong run. He got hit hard again. Uses that strength to lean forward. Second and goal from the one. Jaden Downs meets him and gets right into his legs. I don't – that's one thing that counts does as good as anybody I've ever seen. When his legs are wrapped up, he's hard to timber. Yeah, you know what I mean? I agree. And he, he manages – manages to kind of pump his legs out of there and always pick up yards after, you know, it looks like a full double leg takedown tackle. We've got a blocking back in. Looks like a defensive lineman in. Adds a fullback. Ball goes to the ground. Nice job by Campbell to jump on it. As he got that snap, he never really had a handle on it, and it hits the turf, and he just dives right on top of it. Third and goal from the six-yard line. At the fullback in the backfield, a near set to the tight end side that time, and he wanted to, I mean, they just wanted ISO off the right side. Isolation, lead block of the fullback. It's a quick hit and play, and Campbell, you know, he got in a little big of a hurry uh, with the ball snap to get it in his tailback's hands. Three receivers left, tight end right. Jet Campbell out of the shotgun, and the uh, clock will hit zero. So 15 minutes into this football game, we're tied. 7-7 seven, seven our score. The Digs and the Yotes knotted up Frontier in Conference action quarter. on a Saturday. We'll take a break. We'll start the second quarter out after this one-minute timeout. Hey, we're back here once again to Bob Greenfield. One quarter in the books. We're tied up seven apiece as Montana Tech and the College of Idaho battling here on a Saturday afternoon. Montana Tech, seven first downs thus far. Uh, they have run 16 plays for 120 yards. Jet Campbell, five of six for 86. And Blake counts seven carries for 26 yards thus far. The Digs looking at third and goal from the six-yard line. So as we get up to the line of scrimmage here, Montana Tech will have one back, one receiver wide right. Blake uh, counts is the back. Last time they were in here, they ran the little uh, under route or angle route to Estes. Estes not on the field now, but they got Hoffman in tight. I would expect a little rollout. Three-step drop. Jet Campbell across the middle. Pass complete. Still on his feet is Hoffman. Hoffman fighting to the two. So that's going to bring up fourth and goal here for the Digs. As I look to the sidelines, see if they're going to get the kicking unit out or not. It looks like... I think they saw a little yeah. zone coverage that time, and I think they were expecting man. They had, you know, some runoffs on the outside, and they tried to run uh, Hoffman on a drag route, 
across the middle, but a lot of defenders there, and Hoffman was hit as he first caught it, managed to stay on his feet, but unable to get in the end zone. Gunner Bartlett comes in as a fullback. They have a full house backfield, three backs. Jet Campbell out of the shotgun, fourth and goal from the two, bumped into one another and in trouble, almost going down. He's going to throw it, caught at the goal line and loose on the ground. And they're going to say football is down. He lobbed it to the goal line. He got one of his tight ends as Jalen Taggart hauled it in, but he comes up short of the goal line at the one. You On know, a busted play, boy, Campbell was lucky not to go down. He just lofted it towards the, the end zone. Taggart got catch. it, but came up Ball short of the goal line. line. I tell you, the First play down, action, bootleg Idaho. action out of Campbell. Uh, College Idaho is doing a nice job. Every time he's turned on, on uh, boot action, College Idaho's had a man in yes. his face, and they had it there, forced him to rear up. He managed to stay on his feet, went down onto his left hand, got up, and got that ball delivered as he was literally being creamed in the backfield. Yeah, it was a tremendous effort for him uh, athletically not to go down. He, Like I said, he put his left hand down as a plant, and, and he never, came up a yard short. I never used to worry about these situations defensively until Nolan Saracini went 99 <laughs> for six. Now I always get nervous. First and 10 from the one. Hand off. As Calzaretta dives forward, they'll give him out to the three. That'll bring up second and eight yards for the College of Idaho. Ball at their three-yard line. Quick wind back out of Calzaretta. Montana Tech did a good job play side. He saw a little quick wind back and was able to get out of the shadows. Second and eight out of the shotgun. As a run on the offense is Hibbs still here today. One back, three receivers. Hibbs puts the slot in motion. It's a tight end. Stops just on the edge. Hibbs, handoff to Calzaretta again. He'll find a little seam out to the five, so a little more breathing room. Hibbs tried to keep at that time on the zone fake. Okay. Tried to go out around the right side. Montana, Montana Tech wasn't fooled. Naoki Harmer came up, made the stop for little or no gain. That'll bring up third down here. Third down and seven officially for the College of Idaho. Gotta watch Ball the just shy out. of the five. Watch the sprint out. Watch the roll out here. They, clearly, they feel more comfortable rolling him out a little bit. Three receivers right. One back at home, tight end, goes in motion, stops just off the tackle. Hand off to the tailback, and he'll break the five, but not much more. That's going to bring up fourth down. Montana Tech should get good field position out of it here. Mark Estes down here at midfield, that's his tongue hanging out of his <laughs> face mask. He's licking his chops oh right now. A chance at a return here from midfield. Wind again blowing left to right across him. And the punter is back about seven yards deep in the end zone, getting ready to punt this thing away. So the College of Idaho will punt it away. Montana Tech should get good field position out of it. College of Idaho puts the shield unit out. Three guys back. The punter again about seven yards deep. Montana Tech brings some pressure. The punt is away. Low line drive. Bounces at the 45. Single hop. Estes gets past the bullet. Cuts back, and he'll be taken down at midfield. Nice job getting downfield. Second guy there for the College of Idaho uh, was number 58, Jace French, a defensive end out of Boise. He put some, uh, he put some afterburners in. He, that was a nice play by that young man. Really good tackle. Just got a piece of Estes' leg, but managed to grab on and drag him to the ground. 12-17 left to play here in the first half. We're knotted up seven apiece. Montana Tech, good field position. Campbell, seven of eight for 91 yards and a score. Blake counts, seven carries, 26 yards. Hoffman already has four catches for 76 yards. Pass protection's been decent for this offense. Yes. I look for him maybe to come out and try a quick strike to Hoffman. They, he, uh, he should get one-on-one -on -one here down the right sideline. Man in motion. They fake it to Estes, dropping back. Campbell has time. Campbell wants the deep shot. It comes out a little wounded into double coverage. Flags everywhere. Everybody with stripes through it. Torgerson was the intended target. And flags everywhere as Torgerson tried to come back to that football. Montana Tech going to get yardage out of it. Yeah, it looked like Case and Harden got turned around a little bit back there and kind of panicked and got his paws all over Torgerson as he was trying to get back to the football. They ran Tor Torgerson on the deep post, and then on a shallow cross, they had Hoffman also, but uh, Campbell wanted the home run ball. Torgerson so far on the year, 17 catches, 295 yards, four touchdowns as well for the freshman. That was number one. Penalty. And that will be a 15-yard penalty. Montana Tech will get the football at the 35-yard line of the College of Idaho. So up to the line of up to the line of scrimmage. For some reason, College of Idaho was way deeper than 15 yards. Now they come up to the line of scrimmage. First and ten from the 35. Two receivers left, one to the right. Campbell puts Torgerson wide left. Three-step drop. 
Campbell has time. They'll run that tunnel screen as it goes to Caprera. Caprera cuts to his left, gets past the defender. 25-20, Caprera down to the 18-yard line. Kid's Cap an athlete. Boy, he's had a great year. Just an outstanding career here for Montana Tech. And uh, Kyla Caprera, he's inside the 20 to the 18, first and 10. Does a good job on that tunnel screen. He knows where his bread's being buttered. He got it inside as that offensive lineman was pass check, releasing, and getting downfield. And then you could just see the comfort, you know, with the ball in his hands, dipping in, dipping out. You know, he isn't going to take, uh, say, Hoffman or Torgerson or Estes in a foot race. But, he, you know, you can be equally effective if you can change directions. It's and, and Caprera does a nice job. Caprera goes in motion to the right side by himself. One back at home. Play action. Campbell wants to throw again. He's flushed out of the pocket to his right. Campbell calling for help. He'll loft it in the end zone. Has a man diving incomplete. Logan Kennedy, the intended target on the back of the end zone, gave it everything he had, just couldn't rope it in. Nice throw, and that will bring up second and 10 here for the Digs. It's like my wish list of Santa Claus is coming true. It's been virtually all throws on this drive. I'm just loving life right now. <laughs> well, you're now off the Christmas card list of Blake Counts and family. <laughs> Second down to 10 here for the Digs. They got to just include the back in the passing game. <laughs> One receiver on each side of the formation. He should be in the route. They're just getting a four-man rush. He should be in the route. Twin tight right. As a pump fake, Jet Campbell stands in the pocket, throws it into the end zone one-on-one -on -one for Hoffman. Hoffman looks at the official. And good coverage downfield that time as Abdul, Isaiah Abdul out of Washington was in coverage on Hoffman. Hoffman's got a pretty good case there as he changed direction. He just turned around and the, the official like, okay, I'm tired of fighting off this hold here and kind of gave up on the football. Third down and 10 here for the Digs. They'll trade out a tight end. 11-13 left to play here in the first half. Frontier Conference football on a Saturday. We're knotted up seven apiece. Need Montana good. Tech with the ball. Need good pass protection here. They're probably not going to see pressure. Probably going to see a four-man rush. Uh, a lot of guys dropped into coverage, kind of an umbrella coverage here, even though right now it almost looks like three deep coverage. Oh, wait, we're man-to-man. -man. Might get a little pressure here. Caprera in motion, one back at home. Third down and 10 from the 18. Pressure coming. Campbell drops it off. Wide open. Taggart. Taggart to the goal line. Touchdown, Montana Tech. As they drop it off to Logan Kennedy. And Kennedy gets the touchdown at tight end, and the digs go up. Great call. Caught him in a blitz. Man across the board. Kennedy ran a great route. little change of direction. And uh, uh, Jet Campbell stood in there. Good protection. They picked up the blitz pretty well and gave uh, Campbell a chance to wait for that play to develop. So the kicking unit is in for the PAT. How about that action? Boy, they really uh, – Kennedy's done a great job catching the football at tight end. He was wide open on the seam that time. I was just going to say he's been a huge asset. You, know, you talk about all the talent at wide receiver, but he, you know, he holds his own in there at tight end. And key catches. Snap and hold for the PAT are up, pulls it a little left, and it goes wide left. So the PAT, no good. 11.06 left to play here in this first half. Montana Tech leading 13-7. to We'll take a break. We're back to Bob Greenfield after this one-minute timeout. You're invited to Montana Technological University's fifth annual giving event, Day One, happening the 9th and 10th of September. Day One celebrates Montana Tech's history and growth with the goal of rallying our Montana Tech community, sharing innovations happening on our campuses, and raising funds for our departments, students, and programs. Find out more about Day One and sign up to be an ambassador at dayone.mtech.edu. Welcome back here once again. Frontier Conference football here on a Saturday as the Digs go up 13-7. to uh, Montana Tech, just another nice drive there. And we'll give you some numbers here real quickly for Montana Tech. Ten first downs thus far. They've run 22 offensive plays for 160 yards. Jet Campbell, 9-12, 126 yards, two touchdowns. Hoffman with four catches for 76. 
Uh, Logan Kennedy, two big catches for 23. Mark Estes, one for eight and a score. And the digs up 13 to seven. The P18 no good. Again, wind is an issue here. And we'll see. Uh, it sh certainly should affect the rest of this football game from top to bottom. Special teams going to be an issue. Onside kick. <laughs> You're in the wrong booth. I'm sorry. So Griffith will get ready to kick it off here for Montana Tech. Left to right. The Diggs wearing the green jerseys with the white pants. Kickoff will go left into the wind. Bounces at the 10 and out of bounds at the 3. Nice job that time by the return man. He went over and kind of hovered over it and just watched it go out of bounds. So the College of Idaho will get good field position here. It turns out the onside kick might have been the, the operative call there. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, thanks for joining us here in the second quarter. Ryan Hibbs at quarterback is 5 of 8 for the College of Idaho. He's thrown for 41 yards. Calzaretta, 31 yards on the ground, 7 carries. And we'll see what they bring out the offense here. So, again, we were kind of expecting two different quarterbacks with Jack Rice and Ray Hibbs. We have not seen Rice out today. And I'm trying to remember in my Polish brain if I even saw him warming up, to be completely honest. So, Hibbs at quarterback. He is the sophomore out of Boise, Idaho. Played at Capitol High School. First down and 10 here for the College of Idaho. Hibbs out of the shotgun. Two receivers left, one to the right, tight end right. Tech will bring four to the defensive front. Hibbs, long snap count, slot in motion. And they'll hand it to him on the sweep, a uh, jet sweep around the edge. Boy, nice job getting up field. He'll go out of bounds, eight yards downfield, bring up second and two as he has shoved out of bounds at the 43. Yeah, this went right around the left end of Montana Tech. They looked like they were biting on the quarterback, Keith, that time. Second and two here for the College of Idaho, quickly to the line of scrimmage. Two receivers left, one to the right. Montana Tech up to the line of scrimmage. Tech out defensively, spreading out here as Hibbs out of the shotgun. Wanted to go right, now he's going to run. Hibbs has a blocker. He's taken down from behind, but he does get first down yardage. A pickup of three, nearly four for Hibbs. Good job getting out of his pass rush that time by uh, James Newby. It looked like Hibbs was going to run for 10 yeah. or 15 yards, but Newby ran him down from behind. Yeah, I thought he was way beyond James Newby, and somehow James Newby able to pivot 180 degrees and make the tackle. First down and 10. Yotes, ball at their 47. They trail by six, up to the line of scrimmage. Hibbs, slot in motion. They'll give it to him. Nope, quarterback's going to keep it. Hibbs finds a little lane. He's across midfield, a gain of five on the quarterback, Keith. Just enough out of Hibbs there to keep that Montana Tech defense uh you know, to keep their attention, to keep them honest on defense. They were successful running the, the end around to Juarez earlier in this drive. But just, I mean, you can tell Hibbs isn't necessarily dying to run the ball. But they, in this offense, you have to keep the quarterback involved. Second down and five. Hand off to the tailback. Nope, quarterback for <laughs> Hibbs is going to keep it again. And he'll get six. Boy, nice play that time. They fake the handoff on the dive up the middle. Then Hibbs, as he turns the corner, almost acts as though he's going to pitch that ball out to his receiver, kind of in an option look. That brings their cornerback out of play, and he's able to turn the corner and get first down yardage. Good read out of Hibbs that time. Trumbull was crashing down hard, and he read it right and got it pulled and, and picked up good yards around the right side. First and 10 from the 42-yard line of Montana Tech. Man in motion, Hibbs out of the shotgun. Three-step drop, wants to pass left, and he's going to get smothered at midfield. Hibbs is going to be sacked as Montana Tech gets to him as James Newby gets the sack and a loss of eight. Yeah, good pass rush that time. Newby's coming right up the interior there. They didn't get a lot of sacks, but uh, made a good move at the line of scrimmage. Hibbs wanted, you know, see, Hibbs needed about a second and a half or two to, to get the ball delivered where he wanted to go, and, uh, and James Newby got there in a hurry. So James Newby gets the sack. That is his fourth sack on the year. Second and 18. Two receivers on the right side, both switched for the College of Idaho. Ball right at midfield. Hibbs dropping back, crossing route, overthrown incomplete, and he was hit again. Once again, he's trying to hit that really shallow drag that time to Isaiah Veal. And Veal, once again, was working almost behind the line yeah. of scrimmage that time. That's a point blank throw, a lot of hands, a lot of bodies. That's a Tough one to pick up as you're crossing the field. Third down and eight, and again, there was heavy pressure. Montana Tech in the backfield that time was call it eight, Chuck, putting on some pressure. He that, smashed him that's as where he the, let go. That's where the half second matters. He's not giving him time to clear the hash mark before he throws it. 
Tech brings four up to the defensive front, out of the shotgun, quarterback dropping back, stands in the pocket, delivers downfield, complete out to the 33-yard line. He's going to be shy of the first down marker. We'll see what they give him on the spot, maybe a yard, possibly too shy. It's going to be a gain of about 16. Going to be looking at fourth and one here. A really good route that time by Juarez. He ran the deep dig route across the field. More importantly, the offensive front gave Hibbs plenty of time fourth to look things over. Quickly to the line of scrimmage they come. As they set the football, they wanted a quick snap. Hibbs will step up under center, puts tight end in motion to the right side. Eye formation, handoff will go to Calzaretta, and he'll push his way to the 31. He needed one, he got two. Nice job that time as they stacked up the eye. Heavy formation out there. I was wondering. I hadn't seen Longoria in quite a while, but I see he's back in the game at nose tackle for Montana Tech. They ran him in there for that, that short yardage, but now it looks like he's running back off the field. Yep. So first down and 10 here for the College of Idaho. Hibbs out of the shotgun, the white hat. Controlling tempo here. 8.08 left to play in the first half. Montana Tech leading 13 to 7. Hibbs out of the shotgun. They really want to get the snap count going here. Play action. Hibbs rolls right. He's in trouble. Airs it up downfield. Almost caught. Boy, he got hit again. Montana Tech with the delayed blitz that time. Coming off the edge was uh, Bay. Yeah, they tried to get Ben Ruby uh, the tight end. That time he went up strong, got one hand on it, almost brought it in, but that ball should have been picked off. That, uh, as he brought it in, his hands slapped together. The ball floated in the air. Montana Tech defender couldn't get near it, but that's one of those balls that was in the air for so long. Yeah. Second down and 10 here for the College of Idaho. Ball at the Montana Tech, 31. Second and 10. Slot goes in motion to the left side, out of the shotgun. Hibbs looking left, wants his tight end, hits him in the gut, and it falls incomplete. He turned around, hit him right in the belly, and hit the turf. Tight end just running a choice route that time. Um... Uh, Connor Gagan, Gagan in there, just a, a good route, good choice route, knew how to work in the in the zone coverage, but he let that ball get to his body. You got to receive that ball in your hands. He tried to trap it. Third down and 10. As I look down and see Coach Sampson flapping his his crutches around, Coach oh. Sampson with a, a blown AC, or a, not a blown ACL, a blown Achilles tendon. Third down and 10. We'll talk about that at the half. Two receivers on each side dropping back. Pass route is going to go over the intended target's head incomplete. He was looking that time for uh, looks like Juarez, and Juarez wasn't expecting the football. It sails over his head, doesn't even get his hands up. That'll bring up fourth down for the College of Idaho. Trying to get Juarez crossing the middle of the field again that time. They got a good clear of the, from the inside route. That Juarez started out at X, the, the widest of three receivers to the wide side. They just wanted to clear with their two inside receivers and run him underneath, but Washington did a much better job of staying compressed and on top of Juarez as he's trying to cross the field. Fourth down and 10, offense stays on the field. Hibbs out of the shotgun, three receivers right, one to the left. Ball at the Montana Tech, 31. Montana Tech brings four up, Hibbs, three-step drop, stands in the pocket, starts to collapse, airs it up, that's gonna fall incomplete. And no flag, turnover on downs. Washington was in a battle up there with Nadley. And they tried to get Harmer on a double move that time with uh, Jake Nadley, uh, they tried to get him on a little bit of an out and up. Harmer didn't bite, and Harmer had all the position. Actually, he could have called offensive pass interference, and I'll bet you you would have got the call had it not been fourth down. First down and 10 here for the digs. Turnover on downs. Montana Tech will get it back. So Jet Campbell and company come out. Campbell is 9-12, throwing the football for 126 yards. And they'll see split backs again. Two receivers left, one to the right. Jet Campbell out of the shotgun. Ball at there, 31. Campbell puts man in motion as Jackson stops. Handoff will go to Counts. Counts out to the 33-yard line. A gain of two, not a whole lot there as the College of Idaho swallows him up. Just zone off the left, left side, Jordan Jackson. That's the first day. Uh, he's been in a – You can tell again. I've missed a few games. He's He's been in and out a little bit, the young man from Georgia. Second down and eight here for the Digs. Empty backfield for Campbell. Two receivers left, three to the right. College of Idaho puts four on the defensive front. They look to the sideline as they change the play. 7-10 left to play in the first half. Tech leading 13-7. Campbell again out of the shotgun. Empty backfield. 
Campbell stands, delivers downfield through the hands of his intended target incomplete. Wanted Hoffman out on the sideline. I was going to say, where's that sun at? Hoffman looked like he was struggling to see it yeah. as he ran the five-yard square out there, and the ball went right through his hands. Yeah, never really looked like he had a good look at it at all. Third down and eight here for the Digs. The four-man rush, they, they took a little bit of a, a slant, uh, looked like a, a slant week that – offensive or defensive front that that time but they're trying to get pressure with four men i don't hate back screen boy i'd like to see montana tech at least try and run a back screen right now montana tech will call a timeout coach sampson timeout montana will tech. call a timeout and he'll walk First out and talk out. to the troops montana tech is four or five on third down so far today seven minutes remaining here in the first half you know as uh, coach sampson goes walking out on the field he's wearing a boot he uh uh, he was hurt worse as a coach than he ever was as a player as he popped his Achilles tendon last week at Northern. He's celebrating the first touchdown of the day for Montana Tech, and he said he jumped, and it felt like someone shot him in the back of the leg. The trainers, uh, Alaric Greel, one of the defensive linemen for Montana Tech, is wearing a walking boot on the sideline. They take Greil's walking boot off. They put Coach Sampson in it. And uh, he has a blown Achilles that it sounds like he needs surgery on here shortly. Well, that was going to be my <laughs> question. Is, is this one that it, needs to be surgically repaired? Yeah, it, it didn't ball up like you normally see, but it's it sounds like so it's basically gone. Maybe not a full rupture, yeah. hanging yeah, by a few threads. Pretty much. And uh, he wanted to try and put it off to the end of football season. And, of course, the uh, doctor staff went, um, no. So it sounds like he does have to have surgery soon. But celebrating a touchdown in Haver last week, uh, Coach Sampson ruptured his Achilles tendon. And then on top of that, they had to steal Gryle's walking boot. <laughs> so he is in crutches. He does have one of those, as Coach Green would call it, kind of a, a caddy little cart that, you know, he wheels around, but he says it's awful on the turf. He falls over all the time. So he's in crutches out there today. <laughs> Third down and eight. After the timeout, Montana Tech to the line of scrimmage. One receiver left, two to the right. Hoffman here on the near side. One back and home. Montana Tech, third down and eight at their 33-yard line. Out of the shotgun, Jet Campbell. One-on-one -on -one Hoffman here on the near side. Campbell changing the play or at least barking something out. College of Idaho puts six on the defensive front. They'll bring heavy pressure. Campbell steps up, spins away. He's going to get sacked. Campbell sacked at the 26-yard line. College of Idaho brought the house. They showed that they were going to bring the house, and everybody came. They'll get the sack, and Tech will be forced to punt it away. They're tipping it off. You can see that blitz coming pretty early yeah. if you're Jet Campbell, so you've got to be able to set protection. I couldn't tell if he, he held his tight end in for protection or kept his back in for protection, but, you know, regardless, they tip it off early enough to where you should be able to set your back or tight end or turn back your pass protection and get adequate time. Fourth down of the punting unit is in for Montana Tech. They lead 13 to seven. Man in motion in front. Good snap back and the punt is away. Nice spiral, pushes the return man back. It rolls inside the 20, 15, still rolling inside the 10 down to the seven yard line. Tremendous punt. The line of scrimmage was the 27-yard line. 68-yard kick. There you go. Quick math by Ron Haskett. I was doing the ad and while you were watching it roll to a stop. 6.06 left to play here in this first half. A beautiful punt. Pins College of Idaho back. College of Idaho with three timeouts remaining, according to the big board. And their offense will take over at their seven-yard line. So the College of Idaho back at their seven-yard line. Not very often you can gain momentum off a punt, but we saw it last night a little bit with Glacier. Yep. I still maintain that punt was 80 yards. I don't <laughs> care what she said. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, he completely flipped the field. Ryan Hibbs out of the shotgun here for the College of Idaho. Hibbs puts man in motion. Hibbs handoff to Calzaretta. Calzaretta tries to push forward, and there's just nothing there. Montana Tech swallows it up. Hibbs is 6 of 14, throwing the football for 56 yards. Calzaretta, 34 rushing yards thus far. Right in the middle of it. I mean, a lot of big bodies, but right in the middle of it is Naoki Harmer up there to meet the running back. I mean, he started the push backwards, and, and uh, one of those rare occasions where Harmer's leading the way on the tackle, and the big guys are helping. Usually the defensive backs are the last one to the party. You know, I used to be the last <laughs> one to the pile, but the last one up, then I'd limp and get credit for an assist. Out of the shotgun, Hibbs. They'll move twin tight left. 
Montana tackle to Justin, the defensive front. Out of the shotgun, Hibbs going to roll the pocket right. Airs it up, hits his tight end across the 10, 15, downfield to the 18. Still on his feet at the 20-yard line. First down yardage for the College of Idaho as he goes to his tight end that time as Gagan pulls in the reception and moves the chains. Yeah, good play action that time. Good run, the show of run action by his tight end before he released out into the flat. I mean, that's the only way a tight end can get that open, right? They have to do a good job of selling the run game first and then getting into their route. First down and 10, College of Idaho ball at the 20-yard line. One back, three receivers. Tech shows blitz. They back out of it, and they'll run jet sweep around the edge. Turn it across the 25. Good move to the 30-yard line as with the carry that time is going to be Juarez. Juarez will pick up eight on the quick jet sweep. You know, the perimeter running game's changed a little bit now that you can't go up and chop down lead blockers. Yeah. I don't know if you can in college. You can't in the NFL anymore. You can't go, you know, chop those lead blockers down. It's really changed. You know, it it completely takes away a real aggressive move out of a defensive back coming up to, uh, you know, squeeze the edge or force the edge. Second down and two here for the College of Idaho. Ball at their 28. Man in motion, two backs. Hand off, going to go to Calzaretta. He's across the 30 and falls out to the 34-yard line before he takes a big hit. Teddy Croft comes in to finish him off. That's what you have to do. Calzaretta's fighting for extra yards. He's close to the ground, spins out of there. But as they're fighting, you got to continue to pursue the football. And that time, Teddy Croft came up and just put a really, really nice lick on Calzaretta. James Newby stood him up, and boy, Teddy Croft finished him off. But first down yardage, first down at 10 at the 34 for the College of Idaho. 3.45 left to play in the first half. Four receivers, one back. Three-step drop in trouble. They set up screen, pass complete, and with blockers across the 40, 45, midfield of the Montana Tech 47-yard line. Well executed back screen as Calzaretta gets it, and he'll rumble down to the 47-yard line. He had a pair of big bodies out in front of him. You know, the, the receiver screen, bubble screen, and tunnel screen game has become so prevalent. Uh, you know, you still see NFL teams run some back screen, but you don't see it much at the college level yeah. and the high school level anymore, and it's still a really, really good play because, you know, first and foremost, when you're passing, you're doing pass action, there's always a check and a route generally out of the back anyway. First down and 10 here for the College of Idaho. Montana Tech 5 on the defensive front, dropping back, plenty of time to throw. Airs it up, one-on-one -on -one downfield. That one's going to be batted away incomplete. Good no call. Boy, Both, big battle. Yeah, good no call that time. Uh, they're going to be lobbying for a pass interference, but that time in Sanchez. coverage, just uh, Angel Sanchez, you know, there's a mutual hand fighting going on there with him and Juarez, and let him go. Sanchez, the freshman out of Tacoma, Washington, he played a lot last week, and he played awfully well. Second down and 10 here for the College of Idaho. Ball at the Montana Tech, 47. Well, I'd like to see Montana Tech. Still, I have not seen a linebacker pressure yet out of this defense. Hibbs out of the shotgun. Hibbs, one step, quick pass. Right side complete across the 40 down to the 35. Good stretch that time as a getting the reception. As a with the reception there and losing his cleat is going to be uh, the tight end, Ben Rudy. So Rudy, the junior, lost his cleat. He'll go out. Fresh set of downs for the College of Idaho. Good stretch by Rudy. Big, tall guy. I'd, I'd, like, to, the chains. I'd like to see Montana Tech put pressure on because then it gives everybody a man assignment. You're not going to see wide open receivers, and it'll force Hibbs to throw the ball under a little pressure to someone that's a little uh, got a little closer coverage on him. Tech brings five to the defensive front. Hibbs, play action, hands it off to his tailback. Stretching to the right side, gets away from one defender, down to the 33-yard line. There we saw a little pressure out of that defense. Brought a little linebacker pressure. I think that might be the first time I've seen it. Of course, I don't pay real close attention. Gilbert with the carry that time, a gain of four. <laughs> Blocking and tackling is highly <laughs> overrated. <laughs> 210 left to play here in the first half. Long series here for the College of Idaho as uh, they have burned a little over six minutes so far. Eighth play, this will be the ninth play of the drive. Montana Tech runs Tanner Parsons, a redshirt freshman linebacker out of Shelby, Montana, onto the field. Second down and seven. Hibbs, play action, wants to throw. Rolls left, airs it up on a rope, and that one's overthrown, luckily, or that's points. He had a man wide open here. That's Veal, and that one just sailed over Veal's head. Maybe a little wind assist that yeah, time. Yeah, I was just going to say, that is the one direction you can throw the ball and get a direct wind assist, and that ball sailed on Hibbs a little bit. Really Ooh. nice route that time by Veal. Yeah, Veal just stomped on a dime, and that was probably points if that thing uh, does not get whipped by the wind. Boy, I'd like to see some heat here. Put everybody in man coverage and get a little more pressure on Hibbs. 
and see if he can throw to a closer covered receiver. Third and seven. They're one of seven on third downs today. Hibbs three-step drop. Blitz coming. Hibbs gets hammered. There Pass is incomplete. There you go. They brought the uh, pressure off the edge and then a delayed inside blitz that got to Hibbs just as he is releasing the ball. Still threw a real catchable yeah. ball. Receiver just didn't answer the call. Juarez, the receiver, had... Uh, the Oki Harmer draped all over him. Fourth down and seven here for the College of Idaho. Yeah, I don't know that I, I might go a, a little pressure again here if I'm Montana Tech, and I think the Yotes would expect that. So you have to know your man assignment in case they run a screen. Know Four. your man assignment and beat blocks. Fourth down and seven here for the College of Idaho. Their offense stays on the field at the Montana Tech 33-yard line. Out of the shotgun, Hibbs, Montana Tech. Nobody down at a two or nobody down at a three-point, and they'll bring a ton of pressure. Ball batted at the line of scrimmage. Turnover on downs. Huge. That's a big-time play. Batted down at the line of scrimmage as Montana Tech swats it down. And turnover on downs to the digs. I do believe College Chuck got a hand on it. Yeah, College of Idaho doesn't see much pressure out of Montana Tech all day, but now they give them a dose two times in a row and both times executed excellently out of that defense. That looked a lot like what Carroll did to Montana Tech up there in Helena. Yeah. You know, the – uh, the, the kind of a three-man surface, everybody in a two-point stance, moving, mixing around, making the pass protection a headache. Tech with two timeouts, 139 left to play here in the first half. Ball at their own 32-yard line, a chance to stretch the lead out. They lead by six. Quick first half thus far here from Bob Greenfield. Two receivers each way, one back at home. Three-step drop. Jet Campbell airs it up to the sideline. Pass is behind Caprera. Good coverage, honestly. Caprera got both hands back there, and the corner out there that time was a Bridger Marbo, and Marbo, good pressure on Caprera, forces him to make that one fall incomplete. And ball was just a little underthrown. Uh, uh, Jet Campbell's trying to throw Caprera open on the corner out that time and just underthrew it a little bit, and I think if Caprera could go back and do it again, he would stop, work back, and, and fight back and, and get what he could out of the reception. They're going to run counter the other way and up the middle across the 35 out to the 37-yard line. First carry of the day for Montana Tech's Tyler Folks. Folks ran exceptionally well at Northern, but all of them were called back via penalty. He had about, had about 80 yards rushing. He had like three big ones, and all of them pulled back because of, uh, because of penalties. Third down and four, clock running. 110 left to play here in this first half. Tech not really in any hurry right now. Yeah, you still got plenty of time if you're Montana Tech. They'll just they they're certainly going to go down and try and get points on the board here, but they're they're going to manage the clock here. So 56 seconds, clock running. Play clock is down to eight. So they'll probably call a timeout with about 48 seconds left here in this first half. And of course, I'm wrong. It'll go down to 46. Time out. So Montana Tech will Tech. call a timeout. Time we'll out. go ahead and keep it here. Azell chatted over. Third down and four. They have one timeout remaining. Tech leading 13-7 to seven as of right now. The Digs have run 27 offensive plays for 162 yards. College of Idaho 41 plays for 175 yards thus far. So the Tech uh, offense chatting it over as they're huddled up. They have the ball at their 37-yard line. They need to break the 41 to move the chains. It's been a real grinded-out game here today. Uh, Montana Tech's thrown the ball a lot more than, I, than I've seen them, especially on first and second down. And I like what I see, but they are still struggling a little bit in pass protection. And, you know, that's a work in progress. But, uh, yeah, I like what I see. I like out of, uh, what I see out of Campbell. He's getting the ball delivered on time. He's throwing catchable balls. Even that one, you know, slight underthrow to Cabrera on the corner route. Still trying to throw a catchable ball there. You don't have to be perfect every time. Throw a guy open. Wins continuing to be an issue here as they are ripping out of the West currently. Third down and four. Montana Tech after the timeout. Folks last, stays in the backfield. Last time they got this kind of defensive lineman, uh, College Idaho brought a little pressure, and we'll see if they don't bring a little this time. Campbell out of the shotgun. Man in motion. They'll hand it to him on the jet sweep. Estes has a blocker. Estes turns it up. And he gets hit. Nice tackle at the 39-yard line. Estes is stood up by Abdul, and Abdul will shut him down for a very short game. Looked like he was going to find a seam, and Abdul, really nice tackle. Well, there's a couple things that went on at the end of that play. Abdul could have been called for a little bit of taunting as he took Estes to the ground. And Estes ended up throwing the ball kind of back at him in the face. I'm surprised we didn't see a little laundry there. 38 seconds remaining here in the first half. College of Idaho calls a timeout, so they'll try and make something happen here before the end of this one. 
First half action here at Bob Green Field. Montana Tech leading 13-7. to Thanks for joining us here on a Saturday Frontier Conference action. We'll uh, try and round up some other scores from the Frontier Conference uh, at the half, and we'll keep you updated on those. Anything surprise you so far in the first half, or where, where are you at here so far in the first 30 minutes? Yeah, Montana Tech's uh, you know, trying to throw the ball a little bit more, and I think it's to allow them to – you know, be able to run the ball maybe a little later in the game. But, yeah, I don't hate what I've seen. Uh, Montana Tech defensively has done a nice job. Of course, College Idaho only has seven points on the board. But, yeah, just still, you know, some shots in the foot a little bit that are slowing down, you know, the second quarter drives out of this Montana Tech offense. I think they can get what they want. If they can just get the pass protection, they can get Estes or Torgerson or Hoffman in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Up to the line of scrimmage. The punting unit is in for the digs. Again, wind blowing left to right as they get the punting unit in. And a good snap back, and the kick is away. Low line drive kick into the wind. Bounces at the 25. Single hopped and hammered at the 15. Wowza. Boy, he single hopped that. Nice job by the return man. As taking that on the single hop was Gilbert, and Gilbert was just swarmed. Yeah, Gilbert did a nice job there. Of course, that ball looked like it had potential to roll down inside the five-yard line. So he knew he had to field it, and he was going to take a hit. So first down and 10 here for the College of Idaho. They have two timeouts remaining, 31 seconds left in this opening half as a Montana Tech leading 13-7. to seven. I don't know what I'd expect here. I don't expect much out of this College of Idaho offense here with 30 seconds left down around the 15-yard line. They may show that they want to throw it, but I would expect maybe some kind of a, a draw play here. Hibbs, two receivers on each side of the formation, one back and home. Hibbs looking left the whole way, two guys in the route, pass downfield, picked off. Harmer gets the interception. Naoki Harmer picks it off at the 35-yard line. Great play. Oh, and they say it was down. The back judge came in and said it Rolling hit the, the turf. Naoki pass, Harmer got down. under it. That was picked. He's pleading his case with the official, but the back judge says that that was not an interception. He, the back judge appeared to have the worst angle on that football because he would have been directly behind Harmer. All he would have saw was Harmer's back and the number nine. And you'd have to assume that that will change College of Idaho's feeling here. Montana Tech brings four to the defensive front. Hibbs drops back, wants to throw again. This time, a little a crossing route, and that will fall incomplete. He was looking for Veal, only a couple yards downfield, third down. And College of Idaho got up, snapped that football quickly, third down and 10. Montana Tech's batted a couple balls in the air. I'm not so sure. It's not a great time to bring pressure. But I'm not so sure defensively, if I'm Montana Tech, I don't bring pressure. See if you can shake Hibbs up a little bit, get a deflected ball. Uh, Montana Tech has just been better against the pass and man coverage so far in this half, in my opinion. Third down and 10 here for the College of Idaho. Hibbs, three-step drop, stands in the pocket, and he'll rifle right. Intercepted, Naoki Harmer at the 20, 15, 10. Harmer to the house. Naoki Harmer, pick six. Revenge. Naoki Harmer takes it to the house on the pick six. Montana Tech goes up 19 to seven. Nobody there. Uh, that ball might have just sailed on Hibbs. Montana Tech stayed in zone coverage, and Harmer didn't get too deep. He stayed as deep as the deepest, but he read the quarterback's eyes and jumped that pass the second it was released. So Harmer gets the little retribution pick. And Montana Tech will look for the PAT. 13 seconds remaining here in the first half as they await the snap and hold for the PAT. So the first pick six of the season to Naoki Harmer and Montana Tech goes up 20 to seven. I think you chalk that up to the pressure Montana Tech gave Hibbs on the previous drive on third and fourth down. And there was an uneasiness with Hibbs in that series, even though we never saw pressure, there was an, uneasy, uh, an uneasiness in his throwing motion that uh, I think it up here. We'll kick off to the College of Idaho here. The pick six to Naoki Harmer. And uh, the Digs leading 20 to seven. Look at the three passes. I mean, Harmer picks the first one up. It gets called uh, as an incompletion. And then he misses the shallow drag route uh, well behind the receiver. And then uh, pass number three gets picked off for six. 
So Montana Tech will kick off once again, leading 20 to seven. Frontier Conference action here on a Saturday afternoon. Onside kick. <laughs> that's all you ever used to say when you had your headset on, didn't it? And that's all, I assume that's the case. Did you ever do anything in special teams in any way, shape, or form other than say onside kick when you wear the headphones? No, I took uh, the rest <laughs> of the crew over and we did plyometrics. <laughs> So the kicking unit is in. 13 seconds remaining in the first half. Low line drive, squib kick, takes a big house out to the 30, out to the 36-yard line on the return. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say Idaho, or the College of Idaho takes a knee here. So, uh, yeah, I think that's probably <laughs> a pretty safe bet. wonder if anybody going out to the tailgate can bring us in some more of the chow from over there. The crew did the overnighter last night, as they do once a year. Boise Deegan and Ooh. the fellas just do a great job on that. My goodness. Sit around and cook beef or pork all night, uh, in this case beef, and uh, play poker. They all looked a little worse for wear, I'm not going to lie, this morning. So they take a knee. We have one half in the books. Montana Tech leading 20-7. to Frontier Conference football here on KBOW Butte. We'll take a timeout. We'll give you the numbers and more after this two-minute break. Twenty minutes on the play clock and start it, please. Twenty minutes on the game clock. Thank you. Rocky Mountain Credit Union, we call this community home just like you. That's why we take a locally focused approach for our members. Your financial success is our primary goal. Whether you're refinancing your home, buying a car, starting a business, or just need help with your checking or savings account, we'll give you the financial tools you need to grow. At Rocky Mountain Credit Union, we're here for all life's events, big and small. Stop by your local branch or visit rmcu.net to learn more. Civil engineers build the infrastructure that you know the world needs to, to function every day. With the, the degree in education that you get, 
you're gonna land some great jobs. Civil engineering at Montana Tech will really prepare you for the future. Our students walk out with really high paying jobs. That's what we're all about. 100 year history of doing that. If you decide that engineering is what you wanna do, there's no better place than Montana Tech. It's amazing to me that we have six kids in this family that grew up on a on farm, small ranch. We all turned out to be engineers. My great grandparents, all of their children uh, attended tech and graduated with degrees. Montana Tech, it felt more like a family and they really wanted me to come and be a part of it. Very rare you'll see uh, a family of six engineers and married to engineers. So there's a, a bloodline there that's but it's pretty rare. Montana Tech is my family's solution. I chose engineering because I've always liked tinkering and, and engineering fits right in. You take a problem and come up with a solution and figure out how things work. For me, choosing Montana Tech for my mechanical engineering degree was not only the right thing to do, but it was the best thing to do. Mechanical is filled with great job opportunities and has so much potential growth. Our students walk out with really high paying jobs. Tech has given me the opportunity to pursue what I want and get the education that I really needed. Join us for Day One, Montana Tech's second annual giving event. Day One celebrates our history and our growth, bringing together our Montana Tech community to share what's happening on our campus and raise funds for our departments and programs. For more information or to sign up as an ambassador, visit dayone.mtech.edu. And your new man cave is sweet. Come watch the game. Dude, they're gonna score. Man cave, lady lounges, whatever you call them, steals furniture has exactly what you need to make your room come to life. Shop our man cave showroom today for how to just upgrade your bar set, fireplace, TV, recliner, furniture set, and refrigerator. Steals furniture, making man caves happen for 87 years. Every time I meet an ore digger, there's a natural bond, a natural connection, and every one of us have a sense of pride about where we came from, and it's opened the door to a lot of very good relationships. Montana Tech has a student base that just makes everybody feel like family. Everybody's crazy about being an ore digger. It's just a pride thing. This place brings out in people the very best. I truly believe that we are family. You learn very quickly that you're in school with some of the top students, not only in the country, but in the world. We want to be the CEO of a company. We want to be the leaders of top producers. Our duty as an ore digger is to impact the world. My life is not just lived for myself, but it's lived for other people and it's lived with purpose. I'm an ore digger. I am an ore digger. I am an ore digger. You're invited to Montana Technological University's fifth annual giving event, Day One, happening the 9th and 10th of September. Day One celebrates Montana Tech's history and growth with the goal of rallying our Montana Tech community, sharing innovations happening on our campuses, and raising funds for our departments, students, and programs. Find out more about Day One and sign up to be an ambassador at dayone.mtech.edu.
second half. Wind will continue to be an issue. Heavy winds coming out of the west. They really not have not changed here as the day goes. Just been very consistent all day long. So the College of Idaho. I mean, we talk about, we always make fun of Northern always has wind. How many games have we had up here that there's been no wind? Yeah, one. Kick off two yards deep. Tech will bring it out. It's going to be up the middle. Torgerson cuts at the 15. He'll get out to the 18-yard line. So Torgerson with the return. And Montana Tech will start at their own 18-yard line. Left to right on your radio dial. Tech leading 20 to 7. The teams will huddle up and come out. Always like to see the first play coming out of the half for the offense. Know you're getting the ball. What did you go out or into the locker room and grease up on the grease board and uh, see if you can come out and execute the play? It's been talked at at length. You're probably expecting just 4 2 defense, umbrella coverage, four man surface. What are you going to run? Split backs for Montana Tech. Jet Campbell out of the shotgun. Three receiver spread. Campbell going to roll the pocket to his left, airs it up to the sideline. And that pass is complete across the 25 to the 26 to Hoffman. Real similar to how they started the game. Honestly. So Hoffman gets the reception. That's his fifth of the day. Second and two for the Montana Tech offense. They'll change out Torgerson and will get taggered in at tight end. So they'll go heavy, too tight with Kennedy and, and in an uh, H-back position and to the it. wide side and tight twins to the boundary side. Second down and two here for the Digs. College of Idaho brings eight into the box. Handoff right up the middle as Counts will get it to the 30, a gain of four. First down yardage, Montana Tech. I think if you're Montana Tech, you can get a lot of that against this base front. Uh, you know, a lot like what Butte High was seeing out of Glacier last night you know okay. uh, uh, inside zone attack don't get too greedy with it uh, you know keep your quarterback involved don't get too greedy but four and five yards a crack until they do something to shut it down first down and ten here for the digs one back twin tight right again with two receivers play action wants to throw jet campbell dropping back through the middle pass bobbled and dropped had it for a second hoffman across the 40 Hit him in the hands. He was on it for just a half second. Then it was stripped out of his hands. Good coverage. Good play coming through Hoffman's backside that time. Dorian uh, Harden came through, got his arms, got Hoffman's arms raked away from the ball and got it knocked loose. Second down at 10 here for the Digs. 13.45 left to play in the third. Tech with the football at their 30-yard line. Hoffman goes left. Torgerson in the slot on that side. And Caprera by himself here on the near side. One back at home for Jet Campbell. He'll bring Caprera in motion. He'll stay on the right side. Campbell wanted to throw to his tight end, airs it up deep into triple coverage. That one's going to be overthrown incomplete. As he was looking downfield for his tight end that time, heavy coverage. That'll bring up third down and long here for the Digs. And they'll talk about that. If they don't get the first down here, they will meet down here, and they will grease that up because they got way too much pressure too quick with a three-man rush against turn back pr protection out of Montana Tech. And uh, that's, you know, it, uh, I mean, you just go on record. That is unacceptable out of that offensive front. And, and, and the College of Idaho knows they're going to be able to get pressure, but I don't know that they're expecting to get it with a three-man rush. They are showing pressure now. They have six guys on the defensive front. Hoffman in motion, far left. Third down and 10, heavy pressure coming. Campbell steps up. Campbell going to escape. Campbell across the 35, first down yardage. Campbell spins out to the 43, leans to the 45. Nice run by the quarterback. He'll get 16, and that will move the chains on third and 10. Dick Campbell getting a little cocky there. He made a couple of good moves, but once he gets past the first down markers, if I'm his coach, I'm saying get to the ground. He had a couple opportunities there when he was spinning to absolutely get decleated, and they kept missing him. First down and 10 here for the digs. Ball at their 46-yard line. Jed Campbell with the run. That is his fourth carry of the day. One back at home, four receivers. Fresh set of downs here for the Digs. College of Idaho brings four to the defensive front. Campbell awaiting the snap. He'll hand it off to Counts. No play action. They'll swing it out to Hoffman. Hoffman dives for the catch, and he'll get a yard, maybe two, as he was forced to get out and get that one. Yeah, that's one of those situations. Montana Tech, you know, the call being a throw, but College of Idaho there on first and ten has got their nickel package in. Uh, you know, that should be a green light for Montana Tech just to check to inside zone or some kind of counter or power play, you know, to give your offensive front some angles on less traffic in that defensive front. Second down and eight. Two receivers tight to the formation on the right side. Blake counts in the backfield. College of Idaho five on the defensive front. They're showing pressure. Now they back out of it. Four-man rush, flag down. 
So flag on the play. So a false start against the Digs will back them up five. Only their second penalty here of the afternoon. Montana Tech leading 20 to seven. They'll be behind the chains here. Second down and 15. The Digs have been really good converting on third down here today. They're at 58% currently. Torgerson in motion, goes wide left. One back, second and 15. They're going to drop it off to Counts. Counts has a blocker. Counts across the 45. Steam rolls to midfield. Now a flag down. Might Looks like we're probably going to get a face mask after the, pl after the play ended there. Finally got the back screen, and, and that was a great opportunity to run it. I would like to see Montana Tech develop that just a little slower because uh, uh, College Idaho is lining up there. Their linebackers are at six yards off the ball and dropping into coverage. It was a great time to run screen. The Tech just got the ball released, in my opinion, just a little too quick. Personal foul, face mask. So Number personal foul, head. face mask That's against the College of Idaho. Head. First down. The football was at the 50. That'll bring it down to the 35 and a fresh set of down. So Montana Tech first and 10 inside the 35-yard line of the College of Idaho. The Digs leading 20 to 7. Montana Tech up to the line of scrimmage. Three receivers left, Hoffman wide left, Caprera and Torgerson in the slot. Now you're going to see some pressure out of this uh, Idaho, uh, College Idaho front. Four guys on the defensive front, pulled out, a quarterback going to run with it, and Campbell nowhere to go. Nice tackle that time. He tried to get the edge, and he's taken down by Dorian Harden. Good good tackle there in space by Harden. Back uh, to the line of scrimmage, no more. Yotzer and man coverage across the board, but they didn't bring any linebackers. They just uh, uh, just gave Montana Tech a little man coverage and shrunk the, red, the back end of their defense down a little bit. Second down and 10 here for the Digs. As up to the line of scrimmage they come, Montana Tech. One back, four receivers. Jet Campbell awaits the snap, gets it, three-step drop, stands in the pocket, pressure coming, and as he delivers, he just gets hammered right up the middle. A monster of a man just ran right through him as T.J. Seguritan came through the middle. Yeah, uh, Caprera on the in route. It does it, if he gets a chance to stand there and deliver that ball, Caprera had all the leverage on that inside completion right inside the hash mark that time but Campbell was hit as he released and the ball just went straight to the ground. Another third and ten here for the Dicks. One receiver left, two to the right. Montana Tech at the College of Idaho 35 yard line. Out of the shotgun, Jet Campbell stands in the pocket, has time underthrown. That one at the feet of Hoffman, that's going to bring up fourth down. He'd like that one again. Yeah. He showed a little happy feet there but he got the really good protection that he needed there. Just need to get comfortable, get your pass drop, step up, and get that ball delivered. Hoffman had good separation on the in route that time and a big target. So fourth down and 10 here for the Digs at the College of Idaho 35. Kind of a no man's land. You'd be looking at a, like a 52-yard field goal. So out of the shotgun, Jet Campbell, one back, three receivers. Slot goes in motion across the formation. And they're just going to pooch punt it. That one will land at the 15-yard line and go out of bounds around the 14. So something we haven't seen a whole lot here at the college level, honestly. The pooch punt out of Jet Campbell. And the College of Idaho will take over at the 15-yard line officially. I was going to say pooch punt almost as a joke there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, it's funny how often we see it at the high school game, especially out of Coach Eric Gray. Uh, all of his quarterbacks have been fantastic punters in that scenario. Uh, and we really don't see it at the frontier level that often at all. So here come the Yotes up to the line of scrimmage. They trail 20 to seven, just underway here in the third quarter. Yotes offensively were led by Ryan Hibbs. Tight end goes in motion, stays in the backfield. Hibbs hands it off to Calzaretta. Calzaretta, he gets stood up as Calzaretta delivered to the ground. Good. Ran right into the open arms of Blake Allred that time. Yeah, Allred's there, but a great late stem that time by Trumbull. He stemmed himself right into the mesh point, right into the hole, and uh, forced the quick cut back, and Allred was there to clean up the mess. Second down and seven here for the Yotes. Two receivers right, one of the lefts, out of the shotgun. Awaiting the snap is Hibbs. Hibbs puts a receiver in motion. Handoff will go to his tailback, Calzaretta. Gets a yard and no more. So they keep it on the ground again, and Calzaretta is stood up. Montana Tech's done a great job against the run here today, as uh, that time he is taken down by Cade Wilcox. Yeah, I was going to say, Cade Wilcox, a really good job shrinking the edge and making the play. 
It looked like Hibbs, if he pulls that, he might have a little better play out around the left side here, but gave the ball on the give, and Montana Tech responded. Third down and four here for the Oats. Three receivers, one back. As Hibbs out of the shotgun, Tech brings four. Hibbs has a man wide open, left side complete across the 30 to the 33-yard line. That's a fresh set of downs here for the Yotes Obviously as they get it out to Harden. From the sound of the press box next to us, somebody blew an assignment there on the out route. They just had a clear out of the white, uh, the, the wide out, a clear, a go route, and a five-yard bender out of the inside uh, receiver. And two guys ran with the wide guy, left the five-yard out wide open. First and ten here for the Yotes. Three receivers, one back. Slot goes in motion. They'll give it to him on the jet sweep trying to turn the corner upfield and driven down to the 35-yard line. That's going to be a gain of three. Good pursuit by the Diggs defensively. Really good pursuit that time by Harmer. Looked like he was going to get picked off a couple times crossing the set, and he, he kept the Ooh. pressure on Juarez to try and turn the corner. And Juarez goes over, gets up immediately, and I, whether he has a sting or something with his shoulder, he goes over with the trainer immediately. And that is certainly a, a big weapon out of your disposal for the College of Idaho. War as an outstanding player for the Yotes. Hibbs second down and seven. Slot in motion again. Hibbs out of the shotgun. He'll hand it off to Calzaretta. Calzaretta gets hit in the backfield. He'll get ahead for a gain of one as uh, he was grabbed by the jersey. Yeah. And a uh, nice ride that time. Is getting a hold on of him was Kaladechuk. Great play. Kaladechuk ran it down. It looked like the back <laughs> might get away, but... Call it Daycheck just kept a hold of the jersey and then used his strength to drag the back to the ground. It looked like somebody learned into water ski that won't let go of the rope. You know, just held on. He just pulled down the rope. Third down and seven for the Oats. Four receivers, one back. Montana Tech brings four up. They don't show pressure, but we'll see here. Out of the shotgun hips. Hibbs in the pocket through the middle. Pass caught. Great catch to the Montana Tech 47-yard line as there was a tremendous coverage that time as Washington all over the intended target as John Kreps makes the catch. And that is a well-thrown football and a nice catch by Kreps because Washington was all over him. Well, Bridger Johnson off the left side got really good pressure. And to me, it looked like he got held just enough to give Hibbs time to wait for that in route. And uh, Montana Tech never got a linebacker dropped uh, you know, into that passing lane, and Hibbs got the time he needed, but it looked like uh, Bridger Johnson got held pretty good. First down and 10 from the Montana Tech 47-yard line. Out of the shotgun, Hibbs again. Hibbs will hand it off to Calzaretta. He'll get a little space and get two. Boy, there's just not much there. Well, you know what? In the first half with Calzaretta on the inside zone, what was four and five and six yards in this half so far has become one and two and three yes. yards. So Montana Tech's done a better job in the inside zone portion. And with Hibbs not pulling the ball, it means they're honoring the backside responsibility too and doing a really good job in the interior of that defensive front. Seventh play of this drive. Second down and eight here for the College of Idaho. Seven minutes left to play in the third. Tech leading 20-7. to seven. Out of the shotgun, Hibbs, four-man pressure. Hibbs drops it off, crossing route, complete down to the Montana Tech 36. And should be close to first down yardage as he got it off to Nadley. Nadley was rolled up. And he'll be just shy of the first down marker, it looks like, from here. So third down and less than one here for the Oats. Ball at the Montana Tech 36. They'll compress this defensive front here, but I don't believe they'll get too carried away. You don't want to bring a lot of pressure in short yardage at this point, you know, at this point of the field, just because if Casaretta breaks the line of scrimmage, he'll be gone. Third down and one. Heavy pressure on both sides. Huge line. Quarterback under center this time. Hand off to Calzaretta. He'll break the 35, and he'll get first down yardage, a gain of two, nearly three. So a fresh set of downs here for the College of Idaho, and there are some words being exchanged. Yeah, that's a tight end. Uh, good job <laughs> of, of uh, blocking the edge that time. That's Ruby. The band up against uh, Brendan Kinney. And uh, that was a real dogfight. That one went all the way to the ground. Montana Tech defensively trying to get the right personnel out. First and 10 here for Hibbs. Ball at the Montana Tech 38. Hibbs hands it off to Calzaretta. Calzaretta tries to turn the corner. He gets past one defender. And the rest of the ore diggers swarm to him. As, again, great pursuit, a loss of a yard for Calzaretta as he is just unable to turn that thing south. I say it every game, and I will say it this game. You don't have to make the tackle to make the play that time. Bridger Johnson taking on the lead blocker. 
got to the ground and made a pile, kept his head up and his ar outside arm free. Calzaretta had nowhere to go, couldn't go inside, couldn't go outside, was dancing around. Team Pursuit came and finished him off. Second down and 11 here for Hibbs. Two receivers each way. They'll switch up two receivers on the right-hand side. Hibbs awaiting the snap. He'll get it, looking right, checks it off, wants the crossing route through the middle, overthrown incomplete. Too far out in front of Nadley. That'll bring up third and 11 here for the College of Idaho. Oh, he'd like that one back. Nadley had a couple steps on Naoki Harmer crossing the field on that deep dig route, the deep crossing route, and uh, Hibbs would like that one back. College of Idaho is 4 of 11 on third downs at 36%. And we'll see what comes out here on third and 11. You'd have to assume you're almost in two down territory right now. Third and 11, four receivers, Hibbs out of the shotgun again. Montana Tech brings five to the defensive front. Man in motion, Hibbs dropping back pressure, moves him right. He's gonna air it up, left side, double coverage. Nice catch, one-handed catch in the end zone as Veal ropes it in with one hand. Off hand, left hand, is a pretty good battle there at the goal line. Both the receiver and the defensive back with their paws on each other, trying to adjust to the football, and Veal just reached out and just stabbed it. What a catch by Veal. College of Idaho gets the score. That's good hands, but that's also gloves. <laughs> those things are awesome. Do you ever put those gloves on that these defensive back and receivers oh. wear? Oh, it's like the ball sticks to them. 5.04 left to play here in the third. A seven-point lead for the Diggs. College of Idaho trying to trim that to six. So the kicking unit is in here awaiting the snap. Snap and hold are good. The kick is up and the kick is through. 20 to 14 our score, Montana Tech by six. The Ordinger offense will get it back after this one minute timeout. Media timeout, first and third quarter. Hey, welcome back here once again as the College of Idaho 12 plays 85 yards. And that series over five minutes long. And the College of Idaho able to get a touchdown up. Six-point lead for the Digs, 20 to 14 over the Oats. And Chex Mix is about to get Ron Haskett. Are you okay, brother? Are you going to make it? <laughs> Haskett brought about 12 pounds of Chex Mix into the, uh, into the booth. And it's about to get him. So the Yotes will kick off here to Montana Tech. 5.04 left to play here in this third quarter. And the Ordinger offense will get it back. The wind blows it off the tee, so the Yotes might have to get a holder again. The Yotes have run 57 offensive plays for 260 yards thus far. Hibbs is 13 of 29 for 168 yards. That was his first passing touchdown. He has one interception on the day. Receivers, uh, Nadley, four catches for 37. Juarez, three for 31. Calzaretta, 16 carries for 54 yards running the football. And the kickoff will land right on the goal line and go out. It was drifting left with the wind. It stays in the field of play and goes out the back of the end zone. So Montana Tech will get the – are you going to make it there, brother? <laughs> so the touchback – We'll go to Montana Tech. 5.04 left to play here in the third quarter. Montana Tech's offense will come back out. Campbell is 12 of 21 for a buck 43. He's thrown two touchdowns. Those have gone to Logan Kennedy and Mark Estes. Trevor Hoffman has six catches for 85. And we'll uh, see if the offense can get rolling here. Jed Campbell out of the shotgun, one receiver each way. As the digs up to the line of scrimmage. Campbell, heavy pressure coming. Hands it off to uh, Folks. Folks across the 30. Cut back out to the 34. Nice run by Folks. That one's good for eight. 
And that will bring up second and two here for Montana Tech. As I mentioned yesterday, Folks ran the ball exceptionally well at Northern a week ago, but he lost all his yards due to penalty. So here come the digs. Back up, second down and two. Folks stays in at tailback. Two receivers left. Hoffman wide left. In the slot is Caprera. Torgerson here on the near side. As out of the shotgun, Jet Campbell. College of Idaho brings four to the defensive front. Hand off to Folks again. Folks picks his way across the 35, out to the 38. First down yardage. Folks gets five. That will move the chains for Montana Tech offensively. There we go. What did I miss? <laughs> Well, maybe the lung you put down on the on the ground. Oh, boy. First down. I told you, checks mix will kill you. First down and 10 here for the digs. As they quickly come up to the line of scrimmage. The official making sure the shoulder pads are good to go on our tight end. And up we come. Tight formation. Two receivers out. Two tight ends out. And one back at home. Hand off to Blake Counts. Counts across the 40 out to the 43. That's a gain of five, nearly six on first down. Tech doing a really nice job running the football here as we continue. Yardage is starting to creep up in that offensive front, getting a good push off the football. Well, I think the opportunity's there, no question. The backs just got to see the cutback opportunities when they receive the ball in the backfield. But sometimes it's nice to get, you know, another tailback in there, folks, you know, to help. You know, he had some success, and that'll help. Blake counts, you know, where's he seeing that hole? You know, is the cutback there? Is it play side? Out of the shotgun again, second down at five officially. He'll pull it out, drops it off to his tight end across the 50, 45 to the 43-yard line. First and 10, Logan Kennedy with the reception. Great play action. He put it in the belly of his tailback, pulled it out, got it out to Kennedy, and Kennedy will move the chain. That's once again on the, the play action at the inside zone, how fast College Idaho is getting a a rusher into Campbell's face, but he gets turned around, and a few times he's recognized it and got the ball dumped off into the flat, and in most cases it's Kennedy. And then Kennedy makes a nice cut and gets a good kick-out block from his slot back that time. Kyle Torgerson is able to pick up big yards. Catch number three on the day for Kennedy. First down and 10, Montana Tech. Two receivers left. Shotgun ball at the College of Idaho 42-yard line. Dropping back Campbell in the pocket. He's flushed to his right. He's going to run with it. Tries to get around the edge, and he'll be shoved out of bounds inside the 40, it looks like. A gain of three on first down. Second and seven for Montana Tech. The defensive line for the College of Idaho <coughs> is slanting, <coughs> excuse me, slanting hard to the field. Uh, you, you just watch them. Everybody's kind of slanting hard at a 45-degree angle, you know, just starting in one gap and trying to get to another one. And Montana Tech's doing a better job picking that up here in the second half than they were in the first half. 20 to 14, Montana Tech with the lead. And they have the ball at the College of Idaho 39-yard line. Torgerson in motion, goes wide left. Out of the shotgun, the busted play as Campbell, the snap hit him in the chest, went to the ground. He tried to pick it up and make a play. Nothing happened, and that one's going to drop back a loss of three. Bring up a long third down here for the Montana Tech offense. And that's something we've seen a couple times this year out of Tech. As uh, that snap came back, Jet Campbell wasn't even looking at the line of scrimmage. Luckily, it hits him in the chest and falls right at his feet, and he gets on it. So third down and 12 here for Montana Tech. Ball at the College of Idaho 44-yard line. And up to the line of scrimmage, three receivers left. Blake counts in the backfield. C of I brings four to the defensive front. Tech leads by six. Blitz coming. Campbell dropping back, stands, delivers downfield, has a man. Hoffman, great defensive play, as leaning over his shoulder and making that play defensively is Harden. Harden knocks it away from Hoffman. That's going to bring up fourth down for Montana Tech. 1.15 left to play here in the third quarter, and it looks as though Montana Tech will bring the punting unit in. Nice defensive stand for the College of Idaho. Montana Tech, honestly, that idea of bend, you know, the College of Idaho's defense is bent. Tech's gotten inside the 40 several times, but have been able to, unable to get points here a couple times through. So the punting unit is in here for Montana Tech. The snap is low. They're able to dig it out. The kick is away. End over end bounces at the 11. Montana Tech gets the bullets down. They'll let it roll to the one. So great punt, nice job by the Bullets downfield, and College of Idaho will start at their own one-yard line. As the digs will down it deep. 
105 left to play here in the third quarter. We have a timeout on the field, so we'll take one. Montana Tech leading 20 to 14 over the Yotes of the College of Idaho. We'll take a break. We're back to Bob Greenfield after this one minute timeout. Hey, welcome back here once again to the campus of Montana Tech. Frontier Conference football on KDOW Butte as the Digs leading 20 to 14. College of Idaho pinned back at their one yard line. So the Oats have done a nice job defensively stopping the last couple drives for Montana Tech as they have gotten on the Oats side of the field but just unable to get points. And we'll see what the Oats do with the offensive side here as Hibbs brings them out. Tight end in motion, stops on the left side. Out of the shotgun in the end zone. Hams, hands it off to Calzaretta. Calzaretta leans forward to the four. It's a gain of two, nearly three. And again, that one is out to the four-yard line here for the Oats. Just trying to get their offense a little breathing room here. Coming off the goal line. And Calzaretta always does a nice job leaning forward. Rarely, rarely gets uh, yeah tackled and thrown thrown backwards he, he does a nice job of holding on to the football that's the key thing down here so second down and seven here for the Oats ball at their four yard line as Hibbs out of the shotgun heavy formation again tight end on each side one receiver wide right two backs Hibbs game clock down to 23 seconds remaining in the third Hibbs play action he wants to throw it downfield one on one and that one is up picked off by Washington Great play by Washington. He gets the pick at the 40. That was wonderful body movement. Jordan Washington goes up, gets the pick. Tech turnover. A little bit of contact down there, but both players' eyes were back to the football. And uh, Washington just made a great play, got up and got that ball picked off high point. That's an outstanding play by Washington as he'll get the interception, and now Montana Tech will see if they can do something with it. They'll take over at the College of Idaho 42-yard line. Injured player down for the College of Idaho is the receiver, actually, in that scenario. 14 seconds remaining here in this third quarter. And the Ordigger offense will look to take over. Montana Tech offensively has run 45 plays, 232 yards. Campbell has passed for 158. He's 13 to 23. Well, and you could almost see that. They had two tights, two backs in the backfield, one guy in the route. They just tried to get a veal upfield, bent in on a on a post. Montana Tech really had no one else there with Washington. You know, he's yep. man to man, no no uh, free free safety help. But Washington just didn't give ground, didn't give the separation, and uh, really center fielded that ball really really well. First down and 10, Montana Tech at the 41-yard line of the College of Idaho. <laughs> Are you going to make it, brother? I am. <laughs> Four, it took a while. 14 seconds remaining here in the third. We'll turn this into a PSA of not choking on Chex Mix. <laughs> One back, two receivers, tight end right. Out of the shotgun, Jet Campbell. He'll hand it off to his tailback. Blake Counts gets hit at the line of scrimmage, and he'll get across the 40 down to the 38-yard line, a gain of four. Took a hard hit that time. Yeah. Counts did. <clears throat> and that will do it for the quarter. So with 15 minutes left in this football game, Montana Tech leads 20-14. to 14. The Digs with the football. We'll take a break. We'll start the fourth quarter after this one-minute timeout.
20 to 14, our score. Montana Tech with the lead and the football as the Digs enter the fourth quarter, looking at second down and seven at the College of Idaho 38-yard line. Yeah, really key for Montana Tech to move the sticks here. Really, you should finish one of these drives with six points. I think just one more touchdown could be a backbreaker. Three receivers spread, two backs out of the shotgun. Campbell, they're going to run uh, counter back the other way to Folks, and Folks will get a couple positive yards. As again, they continue to go back to that with that aggressive defense. College of Idaho with pursuit. Third down at five here for the Digs. They'll change out personnel here. Hoffman wide left, Caprera on the left side as well. And it looks like that might change up here as they look to the sideline for the play call. Just underway here in the fourth quarter, Montana Tech leading 20 to 14. Kind of tough to probably <clears throat> be able to tell here from the play call, but it might be two down territory for this Tech offense. Third down at five with three receivers. Caprera comes in motion, he'll stop off tackle left. Dropping back, Campbell through the middle, pass is bobbled and dropped, hit him in the hands. He was looking for his tight end again that time, just unable to make the catch. That'll bring up fourth down here for the Digs. And as of right now, it looks like the offense staying on the field. You mentioned it might be two down territory and the offense not moving currently. Yeah, I don't know if you go for it here. I think you might try and draw them off, off sides. Uh, a lot of people, you know, that never seems to work, but it's always worth the effort. But uh, they're letting the play clock tick yep. down here and they may just take the five-yard penalty and kick it away. The offense slowly walking to the sideline here. Play clock now down to seven. And Coach Sampson out there with the linesman, he will call a timeout when it gets low, and they do call the timeout. So Montana Tech will call a timeout. Fourth down timeout. and five. They have the Montana ball at the College of Idaho 36-yard line, leading 20 to 14. Frontier Conference action here on your hometown station. Thanks for joining us here on KBOW Butte. Paul Pedisco and uh, Ron Haskett here. Score update, Western leading Southern Oregon 38 to seven. That's, that's gonna be a big win for Western. Western's gonna be a tough out this, uh, down the stretch. They've got a nice football team. They've taken a, what do they got, two losses? Yes. That, you know, they those, those two losses probably really kept Coach uh, Norris uh, up late at night, but they got a nice football team. They're going to be tough for anybody to beat. So as it stands right now, Rocky Mountain College is 4-1. and one. Western, the College of Idaho, Eastern, and Southern are all 3-2. and two. Carroll College and Montana Tech are 2-3. and three. So again, you know, we saw so much move last week. This week certainly could be the same. If Tech is to hold on and win this, they go to 500. Also, if Carroll College beats Northern, they go to 500. And then that just creates a, a big old log jam of teams uh, trying to rifle through. Rocky, let me check that here real quickly. Rocky was up the last time we saw. Rocky was leading Eastern 7-0. to zero. That's certainly a big game uh, as far as conference standings go. Montana Tech lining up, showing yep. no backs here. Empty backfield. Three receivers left, two to the right for Jet Campbell out of the shotgun. Fourth down and five at the College of Idaho 36-yard line. Campbell. Looks to the sideline, see if there's any play change. College of Idaho brings four to the defensive front. Nickel package is in. Campbell dropping back in the pocket. Campbell, pump fake, airs it up. Pass complete to the 30-yard line. Tears his helmet off. Torgerson has his helmet torn off. The, the defensive player is still holding on to his helmet, and it looks like it's stuck. His right. finger is stuck in the helmet. The defensive player's fingers are stuck in Torgerson's helmet. He cannot get it off, and Torgerson is down on the field because of it. Tough to lobby against that face mask or no face mask call after that happened. So Torgerson is down on the field. It is first down first yardage foul. by a face long mask. margin Number anyway, but then a 15-yard penalty the afterwards. Montana Tech will have the football down at about the 12-yard line in that vicinity, I think. He took a shot, Torgerson, even though his helmet was off, the injury to him didn't come to the head. It was somewhere down around his uh, hips. Looked like he maybe took a hard shot to the hip bone. So Torgerson does come to the sidelines. They were able to extricate the young men's fingers from his face mask. The jaws of life out there. <laughs> <laughs> McGree had him over in the ambulance. That was good to see. 
So first and 10, Montana Tech after the first down on the penalty. It's amazing how we always see new things each and every week, isn't it? Six-point lead for the Digs. Fresh set of downs at the 15-yard line of the College of Idaho. Tight formation for the Digs. One back handoff will go to Blake Counts. Counts to the 10. It's a gain of four, nearly five. Nice job by the offensive front, giving him a lot of space. Really good push there. I was just going to remark at that. He, it didn't look like much there, but, you know, he went in. First contact was four yards downfield, and credit College of Idaho. They got him to the ground, but, uh, you know, that's pretty good living. He inside the 15-yard line, you get four a crack here. Second down and six, same formation, tight formation. One receiver each way. Handoff will go to Counts. Counts gets hit hard and pushed backwards. And that is going to be no gain, maybe a loss of one here for the Digs. Bring up third down. Now that was a hit. Cade Flint, the D-end, met Counts in the hole, chest to chest. Yeah. Counts looked like he had a brick wall. He stumbled backwards and landed flat on his back. It looked like it took Counts by surprise because Counts normally a guy that runs pretty low. He does get low for how strong he is, and he was upright when he got hit. Want to stay in field goal range here, and no doubt they can take a little bit of a loss here and still be in field goal range, but a field goal goes a long way in this situation. Remember, very windy conditions out of the shotgun. Man in motion on the right side is Estes. Play action, in trouble, getting away. Jet Campbell wants to throw into the back of the end zone. That's going to fall incomplete as Campbell gets hit hard. And he is slow to get up off the turf. He got hit in the back hard, and that brings up fourth down for Montana Tech. Once again on the keep of the zone that uh, Yotes, uh, College Idaho, had a guy right in Campbell's face. He made a great move just to escape a sack after about – you know, a half a second in the pocket. So a field goal attempt will be the case here for Montana Tech. Jared Griffith, they'll put it at the 18-yard line. 28-yard attempt. Griffith knocks it through. Tremendous kick for Griffith. Does not hesitate. Knocks it through, and Montana Tech goes up by nine. That's a big three points here for Montana Tech. They lead 23-14. Frontier Conference action. KBOW Buttes, we're back after this one-minute timeout. Your new man cave is sweet. Come watch the game. Dude, they're gonna score. Man cave, lady lounges, whatever you call them, steals furniture out exactly what you need to make the room come to life. Shop our man cave showroom today for ideas to upgrade your bar set, fireplace, TV, recliner, furniture set, and refrigerator. Steals furniture, making man caves happen for 87 years. Back here once again to Bob Greenfield. Montana Tech up 23-14. to Other scores quickly. Carroll leading Northern 31-zip in the third. And Rocky up over Eastern 28-14 uh, in the second quarter. So those two could get in a wee bit of a shootout. So the wind blew the ball off the tee the first time for Griffith. He'll try one more time. He approaches. The ball is in the air. Drifting left, and it will land four yards deep into the end zone and a touchback here for the Yotes. 12-31 left to play here in this football game as the Yotes will take over, and they will get ready to roll here. The Yotes, big defensive series here for this Tech defense. They've done a really good job in the second half of this game against the inside zone. They gave up the, the one touchdown strike, the pass, but they've done a good job. Uh, in the interior of this defense uh, against the inside running attack of Calzaretta. Probably as good as I've seen a Tech team do against Calzaretta. Completely agree. Calzaretta right now 57 yards rushing. First down and 10. He will get the ball here, and boy, he is hit hard as he crosses the line of scrimmage. There's a little bit of a gap initially. He'll get three, nearly four. But, boy, the second he got across the line of scrimmage, he was just punished for it. All Reds having a nice game at inside linebacker. Quickly to the line of, of scrimmage. Up they come again. Hibbs with one back, Calzaretta. Receiver left, two receivers right. Ball on the right hash mark. Tech puts seven in the box, creeping another up. Receiver in motion right to left. Calzaretta gets the carry again. 
and nothing there. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that is about it. Defensive tackle play has been excellent. You don't get to, you know, talk too much about uh, that portion. You know, we saw James Newby a couple times in in pass rush, but that time, uh, Makahili's at the bottom of that pile, and and Trumbull, you know, they're they're standing up blockers and making a pile and just making it impossible for Calzaretta. One of the offensive linemen for the College of Idaho is down. And they waved the trainers on quickly for him as Garrett Reberg, young man out of uh, Bishop Kelly High School in Boise, Idaho, down. Been a few Bishop Kellys at Montana Tech so over the years. 11.46 left to play here in the football game. Montana Tech leading 23-14. to 14. Frontier Conference action as they get him up. Not putting any weight on his right leg, but he will get off the field with some help. Saturday action here at Alumni Coliseum. Again, Rocky leading Eastern 28-14. Carroll over Northern 31-0. Montana Tech leading this one 23-14 on this Saturday. Again, next week, a, a, a scheduled bye week for everybody, uh, but you're able to fill it, and I believe... I think Northern has Simon Frazier, if I remember right. I think they're the only one to play next week. I think they have Simon Frazier at their new digs. And then uh, everybody gets back after it after the bye week. Where is Simon Frazier, Boise? Canada. Oh, Canada. Oh, Canada. So they'll bring, like, 12 guys down, play three downs. You know the deal. You know, my freshman year, we played the University of British Columbia here. Okay. Uh, you know, that was at that time, that was, that was a school of over 10,000 students and boy were they big <laughs> really yeah they were big yeah okay. i seem to remember they put it on us pretty good but that was my baptism into other than kicking off that was my baptism into college football i had to believe it or not i had to go play cornerback <laughs> and it was cold i had my winter gloves on had my ski gloves on i'll never forget that either third down and five here for the oats back out after the uh, injury so out of the shotgun is Hibbs. Hibbs has one back, two receivers left, one to the right, as we await the white hat to get us underway. Hibbs out of the shotgun. Ball at their 30-yard line. Hibbs, three-step drop. Now he is in trouble. He's going to try to escape. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, stood up, and pushed backwards. Hibbs, nowhere to go. It didn't look like designed run. It looked like uh, the pocket started to collapse. He tried to escape. And that's going to bring up fourth down here for the College of Idaho. Well, he knew he only needed about five yards, but a good job of not falling too deep into coverage uh, by that Montana Tech back half. And they rallied to the quarterback scramble and got him stopped well short, three yards short of the mark. So the kicking unit is in, uh, the punting unit, I should say, for the Yotes. 11-11 left to play in the football game. Montana Tech leading 23-14. The Yotes have the punting unit in. Montana Tech one man back, I believe, is Estes. And the kick is away off the right side of the kicker's foot, and it goes out of bounds out near the 45-yard line of Montana Tech. So the Diggs should get good field position out of this. The official will stop right at the 45. So Montana Tech football at their 45-yard line, right to left on your radio, 10:57 left to play here in the football game. Campbell is 14 to 26 for 165 yards. Hoffman have six has six catches for 85 yards. Counts, 13 carries for 44 yards. Time to go out and chew up some clock. Uh, Blake Counts back in the game at tailback. He did look a little beat up when he took that hard shot earlier here in the second half. And we talked a little bit during the break about how healthy he really is, but he's back on the field there at tailback. First down and 10, one receiver each way. H-back is in, handoff, play action. Campbell wants to throw, has time, airs it up right. Caprera dives for it and comes up short. Just he had a nice route by Caprera. Just too far out in front for Kyla to go and get. Two guys in the route, left and right. Ed Hoffman on a double move here to the short side and Caprera to the wide side. And uh, just threw, tried to throw Caprera uh, open to the sideline and just overthrew it. 10.51 left to play in the football game. Second down and 10, Montana Tech at their 45-yard line. Two receivers on each side. Actually, I should say H-back tight end kind of here on the near side. Three receivers. Man in motion is Hoffman. 
Hoffman stops, hands it off to his tailback, has some running room. Blake Counts, 45-40, and out of bounds. Nice job as Blake Counts runs over Coach Danny Thatcher. <laughs> and that will be first down yardage for Montana Tech. Great lead block that time. Left tackle Hunter Sparks, who's had a great year at left tackle. You know, you talk about, you know, the struggles maybe in the offensive front for Montana Tech. They haven't been at left tackle. You know, that, that you know, like we talked last night, those guys are a unit. You can't really talk about them individually so much as uh, so much of what they do depends on the guy next to them. First down and 10 here for the Diggs. Three receivers, one back ball at the College of Idaho 43-yard line. Estes in motion. They fake the handoff. Dropping back, rolling right, in trouble, looking to throw. Campbell now has time on the run, throws it downfield, incomplete. Hoffman was the intended target. Boy, Hoffman has just been, uh, uh, Abdul has been all over him. I mean, he has done a nice job trying to contain Hoffman. Yeah, multiple plays Abdul's made there. That's a tough assignment with Hoffman, but a good job. Uh, Campbell got a little pressure, escaped, you know, a, a couple guys pursuing him was able to get that ball rele released. That was the type of ball that could get picked off, but I don't know if you noticed, Hoffman slowed down, became kind of a basketball player, did a nice screen out, tried to get a screen out and a catch, but Abdul got that ball knocked away. Second down and 10 here for the Digs. Two receivers, H-back is in, handoff will go to Counts. Counts tries to find a lane, he'll get to the 42, a gain of one. Not a whole lot of breathing room there as the College of Idaho swarms to him. First one to make contact is Tanner Leaf, a linebacker. Brings up third and nine here for the Digs. Ten minutes left to play in the football game. Montana Tech leads by nine. Two score advantage here. Just got to eat up clock. Uh, Going to be a, a, an effort here to go get the first down, no doubt. Montana Tech will more than likely drop back and try and find an open receiver here. But you want to make sure that ball snapped inside ten seconds. Four down lineman defensively. Campbell dropping back. Pressure coming. Campbell didn't see it. He just gets blown up. Campbell gets hit hard. They say that football is still alive, and it bounced out when he hit the turf. And Campbell is down. Campbell got hit hard. He did not see the uh, player coming, and they hit him in the ribs hard. Campbell went down. Well, that's a dream shot and yep. a clean shot by Thomas Cooper. Exactly. The outside linebacker, he came. He beat the right tackle for Montana Tech. That's a speed rush. Campbell was looking out over the left side, never saw him. Good clean shot to the midsection. Probably just got the wind knocked out of him. And that ball, honestly, the ball came out as Campbell hit the ground, but they say it was still live. Luckily, one of the Tech linemen was there to get on it. So the uh, Ordiggers will punt from their 43-yard line, and they will give it back to the College of Idaho. Clock running, 927 left to play here in this football game. Tech leading 23-14, to punting unit in for the Diggs. They'll spread out in the shield. Actually, not really. They'll put two bullets right, one left, two guys in the back. Awaiting the snap. Good one to the punter, and the kick is away. Loose spiral and fielded at the 15-yard line across the 18 to the 20, still on his feet, to the 22. Nice job trying to find somewhere to run with that return, and the College of Idaho will take over officially at their 24-yard line. Good job on the cover that time by Jordan Jackson, the backup receiver. So uh, we do have a final Western beat Southern 38-7. Nice win for the Bulldogs at half. Rocky leading Eastern 24-17. And uh, Carroll up over Northern 31-0 in the other game. John Thatcher, our uh, reporter. Good job, he has one of those hats with the press pass that sits in the, the card in it. First down and 10 here for the Oats. They trail by nine, nine minutes left to play. Out of the shotgun hips. He's the only quarterback we've seen today. Slot left in motion. They'll give it to him on the jet sweep. Turns it upfield across the 25 to the 27. It's going to be a gain of five for the Oats. As uh, they'll turn it upfield and get good positive yards. Look like with the carry that time was Cobb, and he will check out. Second and five here for the Yotes. Yeah, Croft and Cade Wilcox on the tackle. Looked like there was a little more there, but uh, Croft came up and just literally blew up the lead block, and the ball carrier had nowhere to go. Tech, four on the defensive front. Hibbs dropping back. They're going to set up a receiver or back screen again across the 30, 35, 40, down the right sideline and out of bounds. First down yardage to the 45-yard line. That's going to be a pickup of 17. They've run that back screen. That one was more in the center of the field 
uh, unlike the last one that went more to the sidelines, but again, well executed uh, on the back screen. Still an effective play. I just don't think it's run enough in today's game. Eight minutes left to play here in this football game. College of Idaho trails by nine as they have a fresh set of downs at their 46-yard line. Hibbs out of the shotgun. He's thrown for a buck 70 today. Hibbs, three receivers, tight end right. Hibbs hands it off to his tailback, trying to turn the corner, and he'll get out to the 49-yard line, a gain of three, nearly four, as Calzaretta. Didn't look like Calzaretta initially, but it is. That's his 20th carry of the day, 65 yards here today for Calzaretta. Good play by Croft. Get off his hash mark and get down and meet that play close to the line of scrimmage. Had a couple lead blockers out there, but Croft got by him and into Calzaretta, Calzaretta's legs. Second down and seven. 720 left to play in the football game. Hibbs out of the shotgun, tight end left. As Montana Tech showing pressure. Hibbs awaiting the snap. Three receivers, three step drop, pocket holds. Hibbs now is forced to move to his right. Hibbs trying to turn the corner and he'll go out of bounds at the Montana Tech 48. Now a late flag. Personal foul, they're gonna say the uh, shove out of bounds late. And that is going to give College of Idaho 15 more yards. Yeah, the defender made contact with Hibbs on the field of play and just a little shove. And then Hibbs, you know, he did some play acting to go down on the ground on the sideline. That's a good job. I mean, you, you bait the penalty and you get it. But the Montana Tech, they're going crazy because uh, Kaladaychek got blatantly held on the pass rush, which allowed Hibbs to turn the corner in the first place. So Wyant called with a personal foul on the shove out of bounds. And that will bring it down to the Montana Tech 34 yard line. You're told as a defender by rule that if you start your contact on the field of play, you can finish your tackle, you know, for the most part. Yeah. And uh, that's all Wyant did there. He's got his hands on, gave him a little shove. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's certainly nothing dirty. First down and 10 for the Yotes. Ball at the Montana Tech 34. Hibbs out of the shotgun again. Two receivers left. Release tight end. Hibbs going to naked bootleg left. Looking downfield. Drops it off to his tight end. Across the 20. 15. Spins to the 13. He gets it down into the hands of Ruby. And Ruby going to give him another fresh set of downs at the Montana Tech 13-yard line. They'll set the chains. Clock running with 6.45 remaining in this football game. Uh, Montana Tech's uh, losing track of... You know, in the passing game, the rollout passing game, they've been losing track out of Ruby, and I can't remember the other tight end, but there's been a couple times where they've just been wide open, no one in the area code. Hibbs is thrown for 207 yards on the day. Slot goes in motion left to right. First and 10 at the Montana Tech 13. Hibbs, three-step drop, goes right, downfield, passes caught, and driven out of bounds at the two-yard line as with the reception is Nadley. That's going to be first and goal, but a flag is down. Boy, we've had so few flags here today. Might get a rubber out here. Pass interference. It's going to go yeah. against, yeah, C of I. The initial call, anyway. We'll wait for our white hat here for a moment. 6.13 left to play. Pass interference. Number 80 on the offense. That's a 15 yard building. The first down. So, pass interference against the College of Idaho will back them up. So, pa pass interference call against the Oats. That will come uh, back near the 30. And I believe they'll put it at the 29-yard line. Huge, huge Big penalty. Time. Not just because of the completion. Uh, College Idaho was in good shape. You know, they would have been second. You know, say there's no completion there. They'd be second and 10 from the 13-yard line. But now they are moved way back, first and about 25 yards. Ball at the 29-yard line. Out of the shotgun, Hibbs, three receivers. Hibbs, three-step drop, pressure coming. Drops it off underneath, complete across the 25 to the 26-yard line as he gets it into the hands of Cushman. Actually, not, it's Kreps, my apologies. Kreps, the freshman receiver with the catch. That's going to bring up second down and 20 here for the Yotes. They need to break the three-yard line for the first down, and they have the football at the Montana Tech 24. Clock running with 5.48 left to play. Tech leading 23-14. After, you just have to assume they're going to bait Montana Tech on, you know, maybe an opportunity to pick up a P.I. call here. So you got to be real careful in coverage. Keep everything in front of you. One back at home. Two receivers. Hibbs out of the shotgun. Man in motion right to left. 
Hibbs looking left, fires it up and almost picked off. Looked like Harmer almost had his second pick of the day as he went up hard, got both hands on it, just couldn't bring it in. Yeah, it looked like the receiver, uh, in that case, I think it was uh, Connor Gagan maybe got that ball knocked away. That ball was intended for him. He could see it was wide of him, headed towards Harmer. Harmer reached out and looked like uh, Gagan wiped his hand through to uh, Harmer's hands to get it knocked away. Third and 20 from the 24-yard line. Hibbs, two receivers to his left, one to the right. Montana Tech brings three up. Only one guy in a three-point. Now they drop a second in. Hibbs dropping back. Pressure coming. They're going to set up back screen again, trying to get it downfield and nothing there. Just swarmed to at the 22-yard line again. A two, nearly three is all. And with the reception is Alexander, and he was hit hard. Teddy Croft up there sniffed it out. Safety sniffed it out. But uh, actually, you know, for the College of Idaho, I don't know what the decision is here, but the field goal does them as much good as a touchdown in this case. It, it turns it into a one-score game. Fourth down, I don't know what they're doing here, but I, I would try the field goal, wouldn't you? I would think so. The offense does not blink. They stay out. Fourth down and 18. Four receivers, one back. Hibbs out of the shotgun. Tech brings three up. Montana Tech really deep coverage. Hibbs stands in the pocket through the middle. Pass is incomplete. Incomplete pass, turnover. Now a flag way after the play is done. And it did look like there might be contact there before that ball arrived, but the flag was a couple seconds late coming in. The flag comes in well after the play is done. Players were starting to move away, and the flag comes in after the fact here. And by the call, it's going to be pass interference. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily disagree with the call, as bad as that sounds. Uh, looked like the defender did get there a split second early. Just, you know, that ball's coming in at the eight or nine yard line. Let the completion come. Let them complete it and make the tackle. So the pass interference will give College of Idaho a fresh set of downs. Huge break for College of Idaho. I mean, that is a huge break. I mean, I think they make a mistake there by not trying to kick the field goal in the first place. And now they got first and goal from the seven yard line. College of Idaho first and goal from the seven yard line after the penalty. They'll get a fresh set of downs with 4.37 left to play here in the football game. Tech leading by nine. Hibbs, three receivers, one back. Right goes in motion. Hibbs out of the shotgun awaiting the snap. Looking to his left, drops it to his back out in the flat. Calzaretta leaps towards the goal line and gets it. Get another rubber out there, but that time they ran it legally. You know, they ran it smarter, but that's just a rub uh, outside receiver coming downhill and forcing the inside backer that's got man coverage on the tailback to loop around and uh, well executed rubber out that time for the touchdown. So Calzaretta will get the touchdown, the College of Idaho trailing by three. So after the pass interference, College of Idaho is able to get a touchdown with a fresh set of downs. Pass interference call on fourth down, which was short of the first down marker. As they await the kick, snap and hold are good. The PAT is up and good. A two-point football game, 23-21. Montana Tech leads by two with 4.31 left to play here at the football game. We'll take a timeout. I assume we'll get an onside kick, ladies and gentlemen, possibly after this two-minute, or excuse me, after this one-minute timeout. You're invited to Montana Technological University's fifth annual giving event, Day One, happening the 9th and 10th of September. Day One celebrates Montana Tech's history and growth with the goal of rallying our Montana Tech community, sharing innovations happening on our campuses, and raising funds for our departments, students, and programs. Find out more about Day One and sign up to be an ambassador at dayone.mtech.edu.
431 left to play in regulation. Montana Tech leads by two. The College of Idaho getting ready to kick it off. College of Idaho three timeouts. Montana Tech with two. As they look to kick this off, low line drive kick. Single hop gets through and fielded at the 15-yard line by Torgerson. Torgerson across the 30, up the sideline, 35 over the 40 and out of bounds at the 42. Nice return by Torgerson. And Montana Tech with good field position. 424 left to play. They lead by two. Jed Campbell, remember, really got his bell rung the last series out. Good job by the, the up backs and that kickoff return team to recognize that that ball had a little heat on it, let it go by him, get it into the return man's hands, and go get a pad on somebody. Montana Tech, not much momentum offensively right now, but at least they're starting out over the 40-yard line. Two receivers left, one to the right here, Jet Campbell. Campbell is thrown for 165 yards and two scores. Jackson in motion, handoff to the tailback, trying to find somewhere to go straight ahead to the 45-yard line, a gain of three for the tailback. As a runner down is Blake Counts. Counts on the day, his run for about 65 yards. Boy, he's had to earn every foot Boy, of that yes. today. Just uh, taking shot after shot, really grinding it out. Did a great job of holding on to the football. But now it is paramount to hold on to the football and move these chains. Second down and seven. Campbell, two receivers right. Play clock is at 12. They'll let as much burn here for a moment. Fullback in, tailback lined up in the pistol. Man comes in motion is Jackson. They're going to run pitch. Out to Counts. Counts turns it upfield. Counts across the 50. He'll go down at the 52 yards short of the first down marker. A gain of five brings up third and two here for the Montana Tech offense. That time Dylan Martinez makes a pretty nice tackle. All he got was Counts' sleeve on his jersey, but was able to drag him to the ground. Now a huge third down for Montana Tech. Need two yards here. Heck, you need three. Make it a no doubter. Exactly. Ball right at midfield. Third down and two. The Ordiggers up to the line of scrimmage. They lead by two with three minutes left to play in the contest. Three receivers, two backs. Looking to snap. Game clock. And we're going to get whistles and a stoppage of play as Montana Tech will call a timeout. Montana Tech. We heard the booth next to us start to scream there for a second. Something misaligned. Something happened. And Montana Tech with a two-point lead will call a timeout. They have one timeout remaining. 2.56 left to play here in this football game. They lined up in split backs in the backfield with the shotgun set with Logan Kennedy, the tight end, in the backfield. So you'd have to just assume he's going to be the lead blocker for counts whichever direction they end up going. So on the day, Montana Tech has run 59 plays, 253 yards. College of Idaho, 71 plays for 333 yards. Tech leading 23-21. You'd like to think quarterback involved in the play here too, possibly running the ball. But every time the Jet Campbell today has pulled the ball out of the back's hands, he's had somebody for, you know, by and large in his face, you know. So I don't know if I like that option. Uh, just execute up front. I like going, I mean, who's your best offensive front guy right now who's playing as good as anybody? Left tackle. Left tackle, Hunter Sparts. Now they got Logan Kennedy lined up next to him. So I'd expect this thing to either wind back to them or start at their direction. Third and two, Caprera goes in motion left to right. Puts three receivers on the far side of the field. College of Idaho showing blitz. Hand off to Blake Counts. Counts gets through one tackler. He gets first down yardage. Strong run, Blake Counts. First down, Montana Tech. That's a big run by Blake Counts. Yeah, he left no doubt. He did, you know, made contact right around the first down marker, but he was fighting and scratching, pumping his legs, trying to stiff arm to make it a no-brainer uh, first down call for this officiating staff. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining in the football game. The Digs looking at the sideline for the play call. They'll allow the clock to run. Play clock at 12. Count stays in the backfield. Two receivers right. H back up in the left. They'll bring man in motion. Caprera goes wide left for the digs. And handoff will go to Counts. Counts trying to find something positive, and there's nothing there. Boy, they were in the backfield quickly. Counts will lose four. He's down. He's uh, holding on Certain. to that left ankle. So, so Counts Injury timeout. is on the ground here for here the digs. College of Idaho. 
2-11 left to play here in this football game. Montana Tech leading 23-21. And a hard hit in the game today. Yes. There's a lot of guys. Thank you. I don't know how about how seriously beat up, but there has been a lot of guys helped off the field or walked off the field today. And that has been the case this year. I mean, you go back to the Western game. Remember the Carroll game. We the amount of injuries and the amount of players that have been hurt here uh, has been. Uh, it's been a lot. Let's put it that way. It's, it's amazing how many players and how deep teams have had to go on their depth chart at times. So they continue to take a look at Blake Counts here. Montana Tech leading 23-21 again next week, a bye week for both of these two programs. No, it really limits you offensively. And I'd have to believe that Montana Tech, even though they probably didn't want to have to put the ball in the air, they're probably going to have to put the ball in the air or at least – you know, try and roll the edge, but they, you know, they haven't had a lot of luck. Uh, College of Idaho's contain on the perimeter, you know, escapes and running has just been stellar today for the most part. So I don't know if I like rollout pass either. They continue to take a look at counts. Obviously, we've seen Tyler Folks quite a bit, folks, smaller back than counts. Uh, the other one we kind of expect to see uh, is a Grady Koenig. He's out of uh, Helena High School. I think you, I don't know what they do in the backfield, you know, with counts out, you know, size like that, he's not just their number one running back. You know, the, another reason those guys are on the field is they're so good in pass protection. Yeah. So I don't know if you lose anything with folks in the game uh, with pass protection, but I'm not so sure here you don't. Maybe try and double move a Hoffman, you know, pump him on maybe a five yard stop route or something and see if you can't get him behind the defense and uh, get the ball released. You may not get the completion, but you know, in a lot of cases, what you can get there is a defensive hold or a pass interference. Okay. You know, a, a, a cornerback, maybe a cornerback with the itchy trigger finger wants to make the stop, knows he's beat and grabs a hold of the receiver. Montana Tech to the line of scrimmage, second down and 14. Their 62nd offensive snap of this football game. They've gone for 252 yards here today. They got Hoffman alone here to the boundary side. And, uh, with that, he invites a safety over. Yep. So I don't really like going this direction to Hoffman with, with under over coverage. Yeah, certainly they're not. Uh, but what's that mean? The nickels, they got five defensive back nickels on the ground. You got to feel, yeah, look here. I mean, we should be able to get six yards running it too. Second and 14, tight end comes in motion. Hoffman steps off the line of scrimmage, out of the shotgun. As a Campbell pulled it, ball comes out, loose. College of Idaho picks it up, scoops it at the 30, 25, 20, 15, 10. College of Idaho, the scoop and score off the fumble. College of Idaho will score. As that ball came out, it was fumbled. They pick it up and take it to the house. They lead by four. They tried to keep it with the quarterback. Uh, Campbell loses the ball at the mesh point, you know, trying to sink it into the back's arms and then pull it and just a complete disaster so it looks as though they're gonna they're signaling to go for two to try and make it six points absolutely go for two yep. here so the uh, originally had the kicking unit in quarterback is waving him out he's trying to get him to go for two they had originally set up everything to go for the field guard for the PAT now they'll come over and talk to coach here. And the uh, clock will roll. 2.02 left to play here in this football game. College of Idaho chatting it over with the coaching staff. Play clock at 15. A fumble went to the ground. College of Idaho scoops and scores. They were down by two. They now lead by four. And they will go for two here as... Play clock down to zero, and they do not get it off in time. Do they call a timeout? Delay a game. So they were originally, they huddled up on the sideline. Delay a game is going to back them up. The way they were talking, it felt like they were going to call a timeout, but they never did. They got to the line of scrimmage. They never called a timeout. And it looks like the delay a game is going to back them up. There was a lot of confusion after that from the word go. Uh, as the scoop and score, they were obviously celebrating, and then they started talking about going for two. And I by the time they got all of that in, they just were unable to snap the football in time. I turned my head because I just assumed 
that there was a timeout call. That they they took a timeout. Now, Jack Campbell and his offense, you got to be getting ready down here. You can't hang your head. Yep. You've got two minutes, and your number one back is currently out of the game. And, I mean, you've got to get ready. I mean, I'd be throwing the football, working on my drops, getting set, not getting, you know, working on not getting happy feet and going and leading this team to a game-winning drive. So after – after the delay of game, they went for the PAT and put it through. So a five-point lead for the College of Idaho, 28-23, a fumble, scoop, and score for the College of Idaho gives them now a five-point lead, 28-23, two minutes left to play here in the football game. Keegan McCoy's just made, you know, he's made a lot of great defensive plays here in the second half, but his hit coming uh, untouched against Campbell, uh, earlier here in the fourth quarter was huge and then he gets the scoop and score there to put the college of idaho ahead here late in the fourth quarter two huge plays from mccoy my goodness that is just crazy what a big play for the college of idaho as that ball comes out and they do get the scoop and score so the c of i will kick off here montana tech with 202 left to play they have one timeout remaining so plenty of time for the offense to work as Estes the deep back. As we await the kickoff here at Bob Greenfield, the kick is away, end over end kick. This one will land at the one and will it go out of the sideline or will it go, it's a touchback. Torgerson trying to convince the official it went inside the pylon rather than outside. Well, that was perfectly executed. Yeah. They had been squib kicking up to that point going this direction, but a perfectly executed kick by the College of Idaho and Montana Tech will start this series and a potential game-winning drive with two minutes to go and 75 yards to go. That's it. 2.02 left to play here in the football game. Jet Campbell, 14-28, 165 yards passing. Hoffman has uh, six catches for 85. Logan Kennedy, three for 38. Caprera has one catch. Estes with one. And we'll see what they bring out here. Folks in the backfield. Two receivers on each side here for Jet Campbell. They're going to see nickel coverage and a four-man rush. And it's just adamant that they protect it. Campbell, three-step drop, stands in the pocket. He'll be forced up. Campbell will spin at the 25, gets hit hard at the 27-yard line. Clock running. A gain of two. 150 left to play in the football game. Up to the line of scrimmage they come, looking to the sidelines. Hoffman wide left, Torgerson in the slot here on the near side. Caprera up top, 140 left to play. Jed Campbell out of the shotgun, four-man rush coming. Campbell in the pocket, fires it downfield. That one's going to fall between two receivers. Hoffman was under, Torgerson was over. It falls between them, third down here for the Diggs. Campbell's not getting a good drop and a good step up in the pocket. He had a little pressure there but he had plenty of time to step up and deliver the ball on balance, but he's really uncomfortable back there right now. Third down and eight here for Montana Tech. One minute, 33 seconds remaining in the football game. Montana Tech trailing by five, 28-23. Out of the shotgun. Receiver Hoffman in motion. Jed Campbell flushed out of the pocket to his right. Stands up, delivers downfield. Pass is caught by Hoffman at the 35. Very close to first down yardage as Hoffman cuts in front of Estes to make that catch as both of them were there. They're, They're looking the at each other down. with hands up, so it will be first down Montana Tech. This Clock stops until they get the chain set. Really fortunate call here. I'm not so sure he yeah. did reach the 35, but they get a stoppage of clock and a new set of downs. And they're still not showing a whole lot of uh, – urgency right now 110 left to play four receivers jet campbell in the pocket looking left airs it up toward estes estes goes up and it's intercepted college of idaho gets the pick as with the interception is going to be harden harden gets the pick now flags a plenty that doesn't matter the interception seals the deal they'll get the taunting call yep so harden gets the pick down near the 30 yard line and a uh, penalty will back them up, but College of Idaho is going to get the win here. Montana Tech has one timeout, so you know they'll be able to stop the clock once, but this one's gonna go into the record books. Harden gets the interception at the 25 yard line. Dead ball, 
Unsportsmanlike. Unsportsmanlike. We'll back him up 15. My goodness. College of Idaho gets the fumble and the score on the scoop six. And then they get the interception down here to ice this one. Ball comes all the way down to the 12-yard line. So the College of Idaho will step up and take a knee if Montana Tech does use their timeout, which it really does not matter. It's not going to affect anything. They'll be able to take two knees and put this one out. When it looked like the uh, digs were going to get a win or at least have a really good shot there. That ball goes to the ground. College of Idaho gets the scoop and score. That just shows you you have to execute for 60 minutes. I mean, anything can happen. You just you can't get, I wouldn't say too cute with the football, but, uh, you know, because Jack Campbell on that play, he's just trying to make a play, a good, a good sell on the dive fake because he knows his number's been called there to try and go get a first down. But, man, you just have to secure that football. I mean, it sounds like hindsight, but it's so – I mean, just so critical. So Montana Tech will continue to look for their first home win of the year as they'll fall to the College of Idaho here today. 28-23 the final. The Digs 0-3 at home. And a heartbreaking loss here on a Saturday afternoon. They're up by two with only a couple minutes left in the football game. And it looked like they were in a position to try and run the clock out. And... Uh, a fumble recovery for six points, and the College of Idaho gets the win. 28-23, the Yotes over the Ordiggers here on KBOW. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll wrap this one up after this two-minute timeout. 